and uh, his oh, betrothed. Oh, I just realized something. What? Mm -hmm. I just realized OBS was muted. Ah! <laughs> oh, no! Yeah! <laughs> Streaming it inside. Oh, Lord. Oh, it's a Lord. lip reading show. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, okay, so <laughs> we'll, we'll loop Charge around. Charge again. We'll, we'll start, we'll start at, uh, we'll keep going with Adam and we will loop back around. <laughs> oh man, I feel like an idiot. So you want me to start from the beginning? Sure. Alright, yes, so I'm, a I'm Adam, I'm a human male. I will be role-playing a uh, elf male named Xantor, who is in Sandpoint to visit Koya, the priestess, uh, or the high priestess, actually, I should say. She's known me, mainly my father, for quite some time. I'm here to hunt the man who's been accused of murdering my betrothed. Uh, I don't come in or interact with people very often. As druids, we like to live off the land, and we trust nature more than we trust people. Uh, so I'm staying... I, I, I'm staying merely around Koya and she's someone I know and trust, uh, and that's about it right now. And then, take it away to my right. I, I'm pointing, but you can't see me pointing. <laughs> Shaking my head so you can see me. Hmm. I heard that. Um, and I'm Chris, and I'm playing a dwarven rogue from the nearby, well, I wouldn't say nearby Mountain Kingdom, but the closest dwarven kingdom to uh, Sandpoint, uh, Lycon Malvor. He was in town to meet a particular individual, Nishka Mavashti, and upon arriving in town, he learned of her passing just days before he made it into town. So he has been uh, languishing around town pretty much because um, his whole mission for being there kind of rested on speaking with her. So he's now uh, a little depressed and just kind of uh, enjoying the festivities and figuring out what his next move is going to be. Yay. Hey. Hey guys, I am Ashley. My character is going to be Kismuth Tarvalin. Um, she's not, she's a um, half-elf sorcerer. She's not entirely sure where she got her powers from. Um, not entirely sure who her um, not entirely sure who her parents are, um, but she was maybe born in Sandpoint and uh, sent to a nearby monastery to be raised by monks to try to help her control her powers. Um, but she's hearing rumors that someone in Sandpoint can help her out, um, that her mother may have been murdered by a hag and her father may have disappeared into the woods to avenge her mum. So she's seeking information. The end. Which brings us back around to you. <laughs> you. Yeah, you. <laughs> you know, I'm obvious. Hi, I'm Askin, and I'm the DM. Uh, I'm just hanging out here to have uh, uh, to facilitate all this. Don't worry about me. Okay. <laughs> Trendane, take it away. Which, no, I was um, I was updating the stream as Shadzar reminded me, and I will tell you this is what happens when you get out of work at seven o'clock and you have no time to prep. Is you forget a lot of things. Sorry. <laughs> I work full time. It kills me. Seriously. One day. I w I'm dying. Day you'll, Please save me. One day you'll be able to just, to just stream all the time, and that's how you'll make all of your money, I and will. you will be richer than that. That that ass hat who's running for president. Anyway, so hi. Uh, now that you guys can hear me, um, I'm uh, Trent Dane, professional voice actor, and I am playing uh, much much like Adam here. I'm not playing Adam, but much like Adam, I am a human male. However, I am playing a human male uh, fighter person whose name is Balin Koth, and he's from Riddleport, where he is a. Um, an enforcer for one of the crime bosses <clears throat> up there, and he kind of got thrown under the cart uh, when something went awry on one of their um, shakedowns, and um, rather than the person who screwed up taking the fault for what they had done, which he really doesn't you know, like talking about too much, um, he uh, they decided that they were going to blame it on him, and so having his loyalty questioned, he's like, 
I'm out, bye, and uh, he made his way to Sandpoint through less than quite kosher means, I guess. Um, and he's feeling kind of bad about that. And on top of that, he has never really been on ships before and apparently suffers massive bouts of seasickness. So he spent most of his time leaning over the rail um, and feeding the fish. Uh, so he's now in Sandpoint where there is some celebration going on and there's supposed to be huge mountainous piles of incredibly um, um, succulent food that he's just like, <laughs> maybe later. And uh, we'll see how all of this goes. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. On my end? Oh, well, okay. Try to remember where to mute roll 20. On your little picture. Hey, I can move myself. I'm doing the dwarven shuffle. Everybody dance. The dwarven shuffle. What does that look like? Like this. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, I thought that was the the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> As you guys, as we so we'll start with you. Yes, as you guys are uh, are um, are kind of making your way into the festival. Uh, I will remind you that this episode and most everything we do on this channel is sponsored in part by our good friends over at Sirenscape, who are pro producing the awesome <clears throat> uh, background tracks and music and stuff that you will hear throughout the campaign. They are great dudes, so check out Sirenscape. Uh, anyway, um, so you guys are all in the festival. You are not together, obviously. Uh, you're all kind of arriving, maybe at different times, definitely from different directions. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you, as the festival is kind of um, uh, as the festival is start, it hasn't actually officially begun yet. People are gathering in the festival square, which you can see this building right here. Um, this one, this big, big stone thing, is actually the church, uh, the cathedral that has just been built. Um, so as the, as everyone's gathering in the festival square, uh, people are milling around. There are crowds forming. People are kind of looking uh, on. You can see specifically a lot of people are gathering in certain tents and. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Light Nevea, for hosting. You were awesome. And thank you for just helping spread the madness. Um, so yeah, you guys, uh, you guys can see sort of crowds forming around various tents. You can see games getting ready to be set up. Uh, you can see the stage being kind of set up with stuff. So we'll, once again, we'll start with Balin. Uh, what's what's kind of what's your mo? What are you what are you doing? What are you looking for? Um, as you're milling around the, the festival square before things officially get started. Um, what's the weather like? Oh, it's it's a very nice morning. It's sunny. It's uh, you know it's warm. So not cloak weather then. Okay. No. Um. Well, in that case, uh, probably going to find something that's easy on the stomach. So okay. not something with not something with a whole bunch of tomato sauces in it. Um, uh, maybe maybe some some uh, poultry or or uh, starchy vegetables like like potatoes on a stick. Yeah, we'll okay. Love that. Uh, um, did you want to? Um, did you want to? So, 
when did you uh you you've been spending a little bit of time in town so far have you had have you did you have a preference for which tavern you you ended up in uh of course you know there's the uh there's the rusty dragon which is sort of that's the most the one. popular one in town okay that's, that's so true. if you if you were kind of if you spent time in the rusty dragon you kind of made acquaintances uh with the mako um you might yep. seek her out uh, to see if she had, you know, if she's getting ready to serve food or is in the process of cooking. Yeah. And if I've been here for a while, then my stomach has probably settled a fair bit. But still nothing too greasy. Um, so yeah, I would probably wind up sort of, you know, staying near the edges of the crowd, but looking for Amiko if I can find okay. Yeah, eventually you see you see kind of a, a group, a largish group of people congregating around one of the uh, one of the tents. And as soon as you kind of pass by on your way into the uh, into the festival square, the scent that hits you is fairly unmistakably uh, one of her dishes. You can smell spices, and you can smell kind of you know simmering broth, and lots of people are milling around uh, trying to kind of trying to get a. Uh, you know, get a get a look at or, or talk to her or something. You know, she, Mako is very very popular. Um, so you're you're welcome to kind of peek your head in, and give her a shot <clears> if you'd like. I suppose I could do that. I just have to figure out what Balin sounds like, because I haven't really given it any consideration yet. Um, okay. So. <laughs> um, let's zoom this a little bit so I can see. So. Sort of lean in and, and yeah. um, Amico. Mm. Hey. Uh, she's kind of, kind of being, you know, kind of in the process of stirring a pot and also just talking to uh, to people. And thank you so much, PPGA Gotha, for hitting that follow button, man. Welcome to the madness. Thank you for joining us. Uh, no, Amico is kind of looking when she kind of hears your voice. She says, "Oh, uh." Balin, hey, how's it going? And she's kind of waving over a crowd of people. You are muted. Oh, I don't know, I can't hear you. Nope, you are silent. I don't know, he's just, he's sign languaging now. I don't know if we've devolved into into uh, sign language RPG. I'm not very good at that. I can't hear what you're saying. Uh, so I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna get back to Balin in just a second while he figures that out. Um, what about you, Xantor? Uh, you are you're I, I assume you're just recently arrived in town, right? Oh shit! Yeah, I know. It's I figured exciting. out what the problem was. No, no, no. Uh -huh. The problem was not that he was muted. The problem was I had muted Skype, so I didn't get those uh, those I am noises, and that muted the whole. I forgot that muted the whole call. I'm an idiot. I fucking I'm off my. I need sleep. You don't understand. Sleep. So many twelve hours. Uh, okay. Nothing we've said has been on the screen. Huh? No, no, no. I got, I got, I just missed the last thing. That's <laughs> Drake, go ahead. No, no, no. We will continue. All right. So, um, I've been here for about a day, and I've been talking with uh, Koya, the high priestess. Okay. Uh, she's she not really a high priestess. Uh, she's, um, she's more of a more of a gypsy fortune teller than anything else. Well, then I am a patsy because I thought she was giving me magic tips. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Okay, so uh, you, I assume when you say wandering uh, druid, you're referring to the Shawanti, the sort of nomadic peoples, right? No, I'm a wandering druid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A member yes. of the Shawanti, which are like, that's the name of the race. Yes, yes. Of humans. Uh, so, Shawanti being native to Versa, you know, it's not really, it's not really the Shawanti's thing per se, but the Verisians, who are the other native population of the country, really, really love their fortune teller. Like, they're, 
they're, they're really into it. Um, so, like, it's a, to, it's not really treated as superstition or hokery or anything. It's, like, they actually regard tarot card readings very, very highly. Right. Okay. I I'm okay with that. It was more that she knew my father, yeah. and so I trust her explicitly. Yeah. And so... I've been searching her out to find out more about who are the visitors coming to town. Mm -hmm. Because there was rumor that the person who may have murdered my fiance is here in town. So I'm looking for her. Okay, so if you were seeking Koya out, you may have asked around, uh, you know, one or two people as soon as you got here. And they would have told you that Koya has a, uh, I have to see if I have a token for her. Um, I will get one eventually. Um, she uh, she has actually a tent that she has set up um, huh? where she is doing fortune readings today. <clears throat> I will make my way to her tent then. Okay. Yeah, you make your way over and um, you kind of are are led there. And her tent is is actually this one in the corner over here, but it's um it's. Not, it's a little bit fancier than the other tents that are set up. It's just hanging like shawls of many colors with little kind of tassels and dangling beads and metal bits. Uh, there is a beaded curtain that separates the tent from the outside. You, you would have, you may not have seen Koya or, or this exactly, but being around, you've definitely seen native Varisians before. This is a common decoration. Right. Ah, uh, I'm gonna poke my head in, and I do I see her? And I, I see her in her tent. Yeah, so you you poke your head in, and you see kind of this old woman uh, who is sitting on a chair behind a small table uh, at the. Mima. <laughs> Mima. She, she's just sitting very very quietly. She like with her eyes closed. She says, <clears throat> "We're not open for." Fortune readings just yet. Mima, it's me, Xantor, Zalvius' son. She, her eyes kind of, kind of, slowly open. She says, "Ah, yes. Mm. I had seen that I, I had read in the cards that I would see you sometime soon. I, I've come to." town to talk to you about something very important. As you know, Josefina was murdered. And I really don't know where to go, but I think you might be able to help me. So I wanted to start with you first. There was rumor in the woods, the plants tell me that the murderer would be here in town. She, uh, she kind of closes her eyes again. She says, This news sounds ill, but I have not heard such a thing. Perhaps I can discover what the fates have to say. That would be great. I brought you a token, and then I'm going to place a, a small little uh, coin. Okay. Is it like a specific coin, or is it just like a silver piece or something? It's just a silver piece. Okay. But I, be, being in the woods, like, money and all that kind of stuff is not really yeah. our thing, so. She says, place, place your pinch in the bowl. And she kind of gestures to a small brass bowl that is sitting on the center of the table. Plink! <laughs> she, uh, she smiles, and as she, she kind of takes from under the table, she takes a wooden box out and put, sets it on the uh, on the the table in front of her. And as she kind of opens it very, very slowly, she pulls out these large cards. They're like, it's like a deck of cards. You may have seen a Harrow deck before, though it's possible you've never actually experienced them up close. Uh, and she begins to shuffle them. She says, sit down, my child. Let us talk. I sit down, uh, Indian style on the ground in okay. front of her. 
And as uh, as she gets ready to uh, start performing a hero reading, uh, we are going to move over to Mr. Lycon. But before we do, thank you, John Casual, for hitting that follow button. And uh, welcome to the madness, my friend. You are not as casual as they say. <laughs> Hello, John. Uh, so, Lycon, you have uh, you've. You actually, before uh, you have been traveling for the last couple weeks, actually. Um, the le the most recent leg of that journey, uh, you've been traveling on a caravan destined for uh, for Sandpoint. Um, and so you were you probably arrived with this caravan a good you know a couple days ago, as they they would have gotten in early so they could have time to sort of set up all their wares to sell at the festival and to barter on the market day. Um, many of the people that were on the caravan, they you know faces and names kind of escaped you. Some came and went, uh, though obviously one of them that you made quick acquaintances with was a. Very boisterous uh, and ver but very amicable uh, Varisian fellow named Sandra. Uh, he last kind of he last waved you goodbye, uh, saying he would see you sometime soon. As he you know as you departed the caravan, he was pulling the the carts uh, into like he, they're actually parked outside of the just outside the wall, but he pulled one of them into Sandpoint too get things set up. So he may be at the at the festival. You haven't really seen him since. Uh, so you're kind of on your own. Uh, so what, what exactly would you be doing on the morning of this festival? Uh, well, by this point, he's heard the news um, that Nishka has passed and his purpose for being here has kind of uh, been for naught at this point. Um, He's not sure what to do at this point. He's just been kind of hanging around town. Um, right now, he's just been kind of uh, partaking in any drink and food that's available. Um, not necessarily becoming belligerently drunk, but just enough to where he really is not in the mood for company or anything. He's rather short with people. Um, he's just been kind of wandering through... Um, walking around, listening to conversations, not really paying any mind to anybody, um, just wandering around. And uh, at this point, he's kind of uh, just decided to settle down over here on this cart just with a bottle of ale and just kind of lost in his thoughts at this point. Just listening to the sights and sounds of the festival getting uh, started and wondering um, what he's going to do next. Okay. The cart that you're actually sitting, just kind of sitting on the edge on, um, you, you saw it before it had been towed uh, just into, like, just uh, off to the side of the stage a little bit by a couple young acolytes dressed in, like, priest garb. Uh, it's actually, the, it's, the cart itself is, like, covered with a heavy tarp or something that seems to be covering whatever's inside. Okay. Yeah, he's just kind of leaning up against it, just kind of stops, not taking a break, looking around. You know, looking to see if, uh, you know, anything catches his eye. Okay. Yeah, you, you see people, uh, people passing you by, uh, coming and going, you know, very excited for the start of the festival. You see games and stalls and shops being set up. You see, uh, people, you know, gathering around some of the taverns, tents with their tables and stuff. The food hasn't quite been served yet, but... Uh, I mean, it looks like everyone is preparing for a, a fun day of activity. Alright? Yep. And, uh... Kismeth. How, uh... So, you... Um... You actually just only just recently arrived in Sandpoint. Uh, you probably haven't been here all that long. So, let's say... Let's say you've been in Sandpoint maybe a day or two. Uh, but, so the fact that, you know, the fact that everyone's kind of gathered for this festival is a little bit of a, a surprise for you, especially considering where you were raised for most of your life. They didn't really do things like this. Um, so what's your, uh, how's your morning going? So, I'm guessing that I'm going to be slightly hungry if it's morning. Um, 
and people are going to be making me slightly nervous since I've been kind of cloistered off from large groups of people for most of my life. Um, I do see a nice little food cart up here that I would like to meander to to try to avoid some of the crowds and just get some food in my belly and try to gather my thoughts before I go trying to find who I need to find. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you can you move your token wherever you'd like. Food. Okay. Uh, this is um, this is not actually kind of prepared food. It's more like someone is setting up like a fruit stand um, with all kinds of fruits and vegetables, things that look like they came fresh from a farm, probably somewhere outside of town. Uh, and they're, you know, they're setting it up, getting ready to go. Actually, the person setting it up is a fairly young man. Uh, he, you know, he looks like, looks like a, a hard-working kind of farmhand type. Okay, that's, that's perfect, because I really like fruit. So, I would like to kind of interact with a guy to find out maybe what's going on, since I'm a bit lost. Yeah, sure. You see him kind of hauling a. He's he just kind of stands, straightens himself up, hauling like a bag of, uh, of of apples that he is taking across. You know, walking across the cart, uh, and he actually can't really see you because the bag is kind of blocking his view. But as he starts sort of hefting it and dumping it into this bucket nearby, he uh, he he kind of sees you standing there and watching. He says, "Whoa, oh, uh, hello. Uh, can, can I help you with something?" Um, yes, I would actually like to acquire some of your fruit. Oh, uh, sure, um, uh, any, anything in particular you need, uh, we've all, uh, my father and I brought this all in from, uh, from the farmlands, uh, it's all freshly picked. It's lovely. Could you tell me what's going on and why so many people are in the area? Well, of course, it's, it's the Swallowtail Festival. The what? So, it's it's a, it's a festival they they like doing in this town, uh, commemorating Desna, the uh, goddess and all that. I'm not not much of a religious man, uh, but I know the people in people in town go nuts for it. Uh, we come in because it's a good time to sell. Uh, other than the market days, why do I have a deck of cards? No, I don't know where that came from. Um, he says, uh, "I've been here. I've uh, been here a couple times uh, since I was a since I was a young and lots of lots of games, food and drink, speeches. Uh, it's a big, big thing. I hear they're dedicating that big building they've been building. Uh, that one back there. To the goddess? Well, well yeah, uh, something like that." Um, it's, well, they've been building it for a couple years, uh, so they're, they're real, real psyched about being able to open their new cathedral. They haven't had one in a while, you know. You wouldn't happen to know of someone named Shalalu and Dosana, would you? Uh, I heard that name, my boy. And you kind of, as he's, as he's talking, kind of scratching his head, you see this other kind of burly farmer looking man uh striding forward he says Tain uh, you look like um uh, we look like you got time to, to sit around and chat go grab that bushel of onions and make it quick and the, the uh the father kinda leans on the basket kinda looking at you he says You looking for that elf woman Yes sir I would like to find her I have some questions uh, well I don't know much, but I'll tell you this. Uh, you don't really find her so much as she finds you when she's good and ready. Well, thank you for the help and thank you for the produce. Uh, uh, well, if you want to buy something, we take all kinds of coins. Okay, I'll just clink something on and grab a couple fruits and meander off. All right. Uh, so yeah, so as you, you grab your fruit, uh, kind of, you know, pondering over the information about ta what's going on in town, uh, we will jump back to Balin, who is talking with a Mako. Uh, she's sitting there, kind of, big ladle stirring a pot as she talks to you. 
still surrounded by people. Yeah, I yeah, presume. there's all, all kinds of people pushing and trying to be the first in line to get whatever she's get serving, even though she is clearly not ready to serve anyone. Well, I gotta, gotta nudge in close and lean on one of the corner posts that's close enough that it's clear that I'm not in line. Yeah, yeah. And just you know, close enough that I can talk to her without shouting. I think I've settled on a voice now. <clears throat> so, um, Amigo, how goes your day? <laughs> oh, it's it's fine. Uh, busy. I uh, got a lot of a lot of dishes to get done, but uh, it, it looks like they're we're we're about re they're about ready to start their speeches and get everything kicked off, which means. I gotta have lunch ready for all these hungry people. Hmm. But uh, you need, do you need any help with anything? Oh no no no! Uh, I've got it. I've got it all well underway. And she kind of, lit, you know, really quickly, like with her ladle, she reaches over and whacks someone, someone's hand who looks like they're. You see, they they were kind of reaching for like a piece of bread or something. She says, "I've got it under control." Uh, thank you though. Uh, you feel free to go around and enjoy the festival. Uh, play some games. You look like you could use some uh, some entertainment. And uh, mm. come back when we're when we're getting ready to serve lunch. All right, very well. Um, what? Uh, oh, um, by the way, just because it it, it helps you guys. Uh, that's um, what I mean. That's a makeup. <clears throat> and don't mess with her bar. <laughs> mess with her bar. Um, all right. Hey, um, games. Uh, I'm just gonna wander off. Go away, Miku. Go away. You're in the way. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, no. as you, yeah, as you make your way back into the, uh, back into the, uh, the festival, um, we're actually going to get to Santor's uh, uh. hard reading in a little bit because I'm gonna I wanna handle it after we after the festival starts only because dun 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 yeah he'll cause <laughs> reasons well he'll be he'll be in that tent for a while and I actually have to find my deck uh, just so had I, one on the <laughs> uh, I. I wonder if I can import it. Hold on. Okay. Um, yeah, what am I holding on to? There's lots of shit around. Oh, yeah. Hold on to my beer. There we no, go. No, I can't. Oh, man, I can't. Maybe I can transmog. You can hold on to his beer if he wants to. Hold on. I'm, I'm checking my transmogrifier because I might be able to. It's my it beer down. and I'll drink if I want to. <laughs> if I want yes, to. I can. Holy shit. I can import my Harrow deck. Yes. Uh, there's already... <laughs> yes, overwrite it. There we go. Oh my God. Shuffle those. Yes, I will. Uh, I will do that. Um, we'll we'll do that reading in a little bit. So, uh, as you guys are, you guys have been milling around for a little while. Uh, all of a sudden, you notice people starting to uh, to kind of make their way towards the center of the uh, the center of the square, um, because you can see people. Are actually, you know, some people have actually set up chairs and stuff on this wooden stage, and people have kind of walked up onto the stage. Uh, so everyone clearly knows that it is uh, it is time for something to happen. So they're all all getting ready, you know, gathering in in front of the uh, in front of the stage. Voices, you know, voices lower a little bit as they all kind of turn to murmuring and stuff, uh, and all of a sudden. Um, the uh, as uh, you see a woman with kind of short auburn hair, who, uh, uh, standing at the center of the stage. Behind her, you can see four wooden chairs. Three of them appear to be occupied. Uh, and as the crowd notices her and the hush descends, all eyes kind of turn to the stage as she smiles and begins to speak. Uh, she kind of raises her hand. She says, "Welcome." Uh, as many of you know, my name is Kendra Devrin, and I'm proud to serve as the mayor of this fine town. It's wonderful to see so many of you here to join us on this proud day. Uh, I'd like to extend my welcome to 
many of the new faces I see here in the crowd. Uh, I hope you're all enjoying your stay here in Sandpoint, and especially if this is your first visit. Uh, I sincerely hope you'll have a wonderful time. Uh, and to all the old faces I see here today, uh, thank you for coming and thank you for everything that each of you has done to keep this town strong in recent years. Uh, uh, some of you may even know that uh, our good friend Lars Ravanki uh, seems to have torn himself away from work today to join us. Uh, truly a miracle from Desna herself. Um, to which she kind of gestures across the crowd. You see some of the heads turn to uh, their eyes to face a very serious looking man sort of dressed in a heavy leather apron. Uh, all of them kind of emitting a, a little bit of laughter. Uh, his face very, very sour though. Um, uh, and as Kendra kind of waves to him, she continues, she says, And without further ado, let me introduce you to your sheriff in Sandpoint, Mr. Baylor Hemlock. Uh, and as a, a small round of applause uh, goes up, she steps to the side, and a, a very dour-looking man, wearing a worn metal breastplate uh, and a longsword belted at his waist, stands, kind of straightens himself out, and takes the center stage. Uh, his head is clean-shaven, and his eyes kind of dart constantly around the crowd. Um, as he shakes the mayor's hand, he begins to speak. He says, Thank you, mayor. Uh, even in the heat of celebration, let us not forget the sad events that brought us to this day. And let us none of us forget the souls that were lost five years ago. I would like all of you to join me in a moment of silence to remember the lives that were lost in the fire that claimed our previous chapel on that fateful night. As the sheriff uh, lowers his head, the crowd kind of joins him, many of them sort of uh, a little bit awkward as the silence persists throughout the crowd. Um, and after a moment is over, the sheriff raises his head and begins to speak again. In remembering, let us also not allow these events to repeat themselves. I am of the understanding that there is to be a bonfire plan tonight. I urge you all to observe caution during this event. <clears throat> and, um, enjoy yourselves today. Let me introduce our next speaker. Uh, give your attention to Sidrak Drokus, the proprietor of the local theater. Uh, as he nods the, to the crowd and sort of walks back to his chair, uh, passing the next speaker, who is already on his way up to the stage, uh, the man, quite in contrast to the sheriff, is brightly dressed. Uh, he sports a very well-groomed mustache and goatee, uh, and seems to be thoroughly enjoying his day. Uh, and as he reaches the center stage, he kind of loosens his collar a bit and kind of gives the crowd a little bit of a wink. As he begins, he says... Well, thank you, Sheriff, for that uplifting oratory. Uh, now, I know this town has been through some hard times, uh, but look at all we've accomplished, as he motions behind him towards the church. He says, I'm telling you they spared not a single expense with this place. Uh, Father Xantus' chamber pot, solid gold, I'm assured. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm even told that our generous nobles managed to put together a copper or two in construction of this joint. Uh, hell, even the churches may have chipped in a silver or two. Uh, there's even been rumor going around town that all the gods got together and scrounged up four whole gold pieces to help get this thing built. Uh, but don't take it from me, it's the father here who has the direct line. Uh, he's the one that you want to hear from. But before I let him get on with things, I'd like this opportunity to extend my personal invitation to each and every one of you to the new production of The Harpy's Curse, starring the world-famous Magnamarian diva Alessandra as Avicera, the Harpy Queen. It's all premiering tomorrow evening at the Sandpoint Theater, and it's going to be fabulous. Uh, and now join me in a bit of applause for His Holiness himself, Father Xantus. Uh, and the crowd kind of begins cheering as Cydric motions the, uh, the father to the stage. Uh, the young priest looks noticeably abashed 
at, at his reception that's been set up for him. Uh, he wears traditional ceremonial robes of a priest of Desna uh, and a very large shining silver holy symbol around his neck. As he smiles and kind of raises his hands to try and calm the crowd, he says, uh, uh, Thank you, Sardrak. And thank all of you for coming to join us on this most holy day. Uh, today is a day of new beginnings. So without boring you with long speeches, uh, I now <laughs> declare the Swallowtail Festival officially underway. Uh, and as he throws up his hands, there is a, a raucous applause from the crowd and everyone in attendance seems eager to kind of get on with the, the festival and the games and all that stuff. Uh, so as the crowd disperses, you guys are sort of left to either follow them or go about your business as you see fit. <clears throat> Does it look like she's serving yet? <laughs> no, it's, it's it's still pretty early in the morning. Yeah, I was afraid of that. I mean, you, you didn't really ask her for anything. You're welcome to go over and do it. I'm just going to go find an apple or a carrot or something. <laughs> there is a fruit stand. There is. I have heard that. With seagull fruit. Oh, seagull fruit. Yeah, apparently oh. someone was worried about seagulls pooping on the fruit. I, I heard about that, I think. <laughs> From the far side of the, the thing. So I'm going to go and see if there's any non eliminated on fruit, <laughs> fruit. okay vegetables um as you uh as you kind of make your way through the crowd you notice that at one particular tent uh with a few tables set up outside of it um give me one second there's uh actually let me let me just change this real quick um yeah you notice that there's a lot of people that have kind of gathered up at, at, at outside of this one tent, and there are some drinks going around, uh, there, but there is a lot of revelry. Uh, the men's, the men that you pass by, you know, in, you know, at these tables and at this, uh, this tent seem to be the, the type that you'd see probably working down at, a, at the dock or something like that. Like, very, Ooh. very kind of rough-and-tumble guys. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Is that the tent that says hagfish that I'm right next to? Yep. Okay. Oh, good. Look, hagfish. They're so cute. They're yeah. Adorable. Mmm. And tasty. <laughs> do you wanna Do you wanna make your way through the tent? Uh, yeah, sure. And thank you so much, Ecto Master, for following. Welcome to the madness, my friend. Thank you. Welcome. So yeah, so you, na, 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 na. you make your way. Yeah, na, na, na. reminds me of Ecto Cooler. Uh, anyway, ah. you uh. You make your way through this crowd, and they're all kind of laughing and cheering and stuff. Uh, inside the tent, you can see it actually is, uh, first of all, the smell that hits you. It's seawater and brine and ale and, you know, uh, all, probably body odor mixed in there, too. I was just going to say, man flesh. Yes. <laughs> uh, and you can see there's um there's like a uh, like a bar like a wooden bar where a bunch of people are kind of drinking and reveling and kind of leaning up against the bar and talking with um with one of the patrons is this sort of gregarious old man who is probably the most salty seaman you've ever seen like big <laughs> white beard hat like a, a flop hat he's got a like he you know he's just heavy set and he's leaning in and he's like he's chatting away with, with some of these patrons okay so um, is, is there space like yeah, you at can, the bar you can, you can push your way through and find some space alright so I'll make my way to the bar and a drink of your whatever <laughs> yeah he kind of kind of turns to the man he's talking to and looks you looks you over he says ah <laughs> <laughs> I like you already. As he uh, he grabs a mug from uh, from under the bar and kind of like quickly fills it at a, at a nameless keg and puts it down on the table. He says, nah, "There's uh, there's some good ale for you, but uh, well, 
I got something a little, uh, a little bit stronger if you're in for it. Let me check. I'll take a sip of it. Mm. It's average. It's it's it's, me it's mediocre ale. It will definitely take something stronger than this. He uh, he kind of says. But I'll take this as well. He uh, he kind of <laughs> he kind of laughs and pats his hand up, like slams his hand on the bar. He says, "You hear that, boys? We got a challenger!" And everyone like from around you just a cacophony of laughs and cheers goes up uh, from most of the patrons. Oh, good. With the challenger for what? He, uh, he <laughs> says, um, he, uh, he kind of says, Oh, yeah, you ain't never heard of the Hagfish Challenge? How long you been in town? I'd say roughly a day and a half, possibly two. I, I wasn't <laughs> in all that good of spirits when I got here. Well, you can't leave Sandpoint without at least taking the challenge. And he kind of reaches Would you up. like to bet on that? He kind no, of I'm reaches sorry, up ahead. and he packs a... What looks, what you notice, nailed to one of the, the support beams of this tent is like a, a, a leather purse that looks like it's weighed down heavy with coins as he pats it. Is that what I have to do? Fuck, I went Scottish, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's Verissian, you gotta st stay Verissian. I'm working on that. It's... Stay salty. Riddle, Riddleport is near to the edge of, the very edge of Verissian. No, R mm. Riddleport is, is a Verissian city, so... It is, yeah. but it's way up near the edge of Verissian. Uh, or up near the... never mind. It's about the middle. Okay. Okay! Um... <laughs> okay, okay. Uh... Yeah. So... Alright, so does that mean the proto-Russian doesn't work? No, no, do whatever you'd like. Alright, that's what I was going with, that's I, why I started it. Yeah, I, I do... So my, is that what... Go ahead. No, no, I do... Verissian, I do is a... It's like a gypsy accent, so anything that sounds oh. gypsy is fine. Alright, well, I... This is this what I have to drink? Because... No, that's the coins that you win. Oh, that should be much easier to swallow. Wait. <laughs> let me let me get some of these down me first. So clearly, I need an appetizer, and he I'll says, just chug the he, whole thing. He says, "Here's how it goes, right? You put your money on the t you put your silver on the table, and then all you have to do, and everyone, by the way, everyone uh, in the in the tavern is kind of leaning in, like listening to to your reaction here. He says, all you gotta do is put down a single tankard." And he points to a like a glass tankard. He says, "A single tankard of water from Nora's tank." Nora. He says, "Hey, Nora!" And he points over his shoulder. And as you kind of lean around and see, there's a big glass fish tank, very dirty water, where you can just barely make out, like swarming and swimming through the water, is this long tube-like kind of aquatic creature. Yeah. Hmm. Reminds me of my last fiance. Hmm. <laughs> he says, Name or appearance? Pick one. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> All right. And I'll pull out a silver and slam it down in the bar. Let's take your challenge. He says, oh, We got a challenger, boys. Uh, as he quickly just reaches up and scoops up this mug. And as he slams it down hard onto the table, it kind of splashes, you can see it's this dark, like, you know what a fish tank looks like when you never clean I, it? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, you I'm got very to, intimate. That's, that's basically what you got a, muck, um, a mug of. There's this little slimy film at the top, little froth. As he says, it's all yours, friend. So is uh, drink it all in one go? Is chug or do I get to sip on it for a few days? <laughs> he says, "You gotta put it, put down the mug, make it as quick as you can, and you gotta hold it down." Uh, for how long? I don't care if you walk away and vomit, but you ain't vomiting <laughs> in front of me. All right, all right, that's fine. Let's see what happens. I will upend the okay. mug and chug. All right. 
So I am going to need from you, Mr. Balin. A constitution! Oh yeah, I'm gonna need a constitution, <laughs> uh, a constitution save. Uh, Alright, where are you, constitution save? Do I just click on the... You should just click on the word, yeah, on the... On the should be a thing that says save, I think. Uh, saving throws, yeah, just click on the word constitution. Uh-huh. I'm still looking for the word saving throws. No, no, it's... it's uh, oh! Yeah. Just click on the word constitution. Yep. Like this. The USS constitution. And it Yay. Will be a 19. All right. So on a 19, you grab this mug and you start to go, 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 go. And it's, oh my God, it is the most foul taste you have ever, in, you have ever uh, come across. That you have ever, yeah. Yeah, it is just, <laughs> it is horrible. It's slimy and it's, there's bits of something in there. Uh, you can feel going down your throat. It is just disgusting. But you do manage, like, basically the first constitution save is because when you put this thing in your mouth, the smell and the taste alone you are enough to probably make you gag and stop right there. But you manage to power through it, and you manage to keep drinking. I'm going to need a second constitution save to see if you can keep it down. Keep it down, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? Take the, yeah, give it the mouth. All right, Constitution. <laughs> what do we got there? Thirteen. It is your this this liquid hits your stomach and it just your stomach starts gurgling and like oh just it, like on the boat yeah oh yeah <laughs> it's it is everything about being on a boat condensed into a mug and like shot right into you. As you, like, like as soon as it hits your stomach, you kind of lurch forward and, like, instinctively grab the bar, and you, like, like, you're going to heave for a second, and everyone's leaning in. You actually have two hands, like, one on each They're your, leaning in? Yeah, oh, they're, they're, they're watching. They're, like, one hand is basically on the back of, of each of your shoulders, basically not pushing you or anything. They're just so, like, keeping you there so you don't run away. Uh, and they're, they're all, like, they're all kind of, like... Uh, like seeing whether you do it. Um, unfortunately, your stomach just—it's—it's it's that seasickness again. I cast the out, Damon. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, you just start, and everyone like someone kind of grabs you, and like you don't even realize it's happening because someone like faces you towards the dirt. And this water just come right back out of you. And every like everyone in the in the bar is just laughing and rolling out of their seats. Jorge and the uh, the guy with the beard is just like. <laughs> I slowly pull myself back up, and that's why I hate that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he kind of he kind of laughs. He kind of slaps his hand down on the coin you put on the table, looks it over, and he says, "Ah, oh, well, that was a good effort, friend. Drinks are on me." And he kind of drops the uh, the coin, the silver piece, into the pouch, and everyone just claps you on the shoulder and keeps right back on reveling. Oh, sip very, very gently. <laughs> At my new drink. Uh, just try to get that taste out of my mouth. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Get it out. <laughs> and onward. Alright. So, um uh do, 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 do. Lycon, have you moved since like have you have has anything caught your eye or have you been doing anything? <laughs> um playing a dwarf. As uh I think as the the ruckus started over at the uh, the hagfish tent over here, I kind of started uh, wandering over. Sure. And uh, I made it there right about the time. Uh, just probably, probably just, just in time. This to see large gentleman. <laughs> yeah. You caught the vomit. Heaved act. everywhere. <laughs> All right. So yeah, you you kind of see him like he he's just become like part of this crowd now. As you you caught him vomiting, uh, did you want to like sidle up into the bar and maybe grab a drink for yourself? Yeah, I walk in after 
especially with the uh, the drinks on uh, this one gentleman, and uh, I definitely partake in that. Cool. Uh, yeah, uh, you uh, you got like you're welcome to talk to him if you'd like uh, the the or, or any of the revelers, the bartender. You know, if you have anything you want to ask or say. Not not at this point. He just kind of wanders in, just looking for another drink for the moment. Somebody's <laughs> typing in the corner of the tent. And That's it's me. It. Yeah, sorry. Um, so, uh, so yeah, uh, as as you wander into the crowd, um, what about you, Kismuth? Do you have any, like, there are games going on, people are setting up, like, gambling, and people are... Yeah, do you have any interest in vomit? Because there's plenty of it over here. <laughs> yeah, there's some of that, well, too. It really, it's, it's something for everyone, I think. I think I was going to make my way up to one of the games because I've never seen them before and I wanted to see what was going on. But about the time I was about to pass a smelly tent that I decided super not to go into, <laughs> someone threw up and I just... I've been watching in disgusted awe for a few minutes. To a make sure sympathetic gag. Of <laughs> to make sure he's not gonna... Windle away. <laughs> okay, so you uh, sorry, so you make your way into the tent, and you can kind of, you can or near the tent, and you nearish. <laughs> yeah, you can see sort of these the the men and the the patrons. Uh, you can hear kind of the raucous celebrating and all that stuff that's going on in here. Uh, did you want to, like, insert yourself into that? Did you want to talk to anyone nearby? Um, I'm maybe just going to wash for a minute because I was not raised around such rowdy, smelly people and I'm slightly off-put, but also slightly curious, so I'm gonna hang in the fringe. Okay. Yeah, um, so we will probably get back to the whatever is going on in, uh, in that neck of the woods in just a second, but... Uh, Zentor, you have settled in, uh, to, you have settled into, uh, Koya's tent, and let me just right, find right. my, my little book here, because... My little black book. Yeah, <laughs> all that. Okay. So, um, as she, uh, as she starts shuffling these cards, um, she is going to, uh, she'll, she kind of holds them in her hand, she puts them down on the table after she shuffled them, she says... You have the first part of any reading is a question. You must ask the question of the fates. I merely interpret what they have to say. Who killed Josefina? And thank you so much to uh, Hayate Masaru for hitting that follow button. Welcome, my friend. Welcome to the madness, and thank you for joining us. Uh, that is not who killed her, though. Uh, that is someone else. Uh, so, she, uh, she, she closes her, she nods and closes her eyes, and as she deals the, a card, she puts it face down on the table, uh, and she says, The first part of any reading is to interpret your past. Uh, as she lays three cards down in a line. And she says, First, and I have to zoom in here so I can read this. Uh, the eclipse. <laughs> yeah. Give me one second. Uh, okay, she says, I, the, the fates which do tell me that. You have self-doubt, a loss of purpose, some, some, some event has led you here, but you do not know why you feel you are wandering aimlessly. Uh, she says, perhaps you have lost your way along a path, and you seek to find the path again. 
even though the briars tangle around you. She says, Poison takes many forms, and not all of them are physical. The death of your beloved is perhaps a death of your freedom. Or perhaps it is something that has poisoned your mind and made you forget what it is that you should truly be seeking. Sometimes the virtuous can be poisoned, and we must help them find their way again. She says, Your past has seen disaster, an unthinking, unreasoning thing that overruns all who get in its way. Perhaps physical, or perhaps... A, a calamity of some other type. It's something you are not able to avert. And she, uh, she kind of nods and uh, reaches for the deck again. She says, But with your past laid before you, we now must focus on the present. What exactly is your present? This is what you wish to know. I want revenge. Mm. The fates say that an attack will come at you from all sides. Uh, perhaps physical or perhaps mental. Uh, but whether strength is a thing of the flesh or the mind, it can dissolve under such an such an assault. But, perhaps during such a thing, you will find strength that you did not know you had. She says, the midwife is a conduit to creation, although she does not create her own. There will, the fates want you to know that there will be new life or new information in the world. That her heart, the one who helps bring it, can see good even in the worst situations. Are you strong enough of character to see the same? What does this new life mean for you? And finally, you will encounter the, f the fates tell me you will encounter a physical power outside your control. An authority? An army? A disaster of some sort? Or even... Even something you did not know you needed. But whatever it is, the most important thing is that you survive it. She says, will you be strong enough to face whatever it is you need to in order to find your footing? And as she draws the last three cards, she says, And finally we will look to your future and see what the, f what the cards have to say. Traps and tricks are what this card says. Slight of hand and slight of mind. An impossible or intractable situation you may be caught in. Or maybe an opportunity arriving at the perfect moment to show you the way. Okay. 
emptiness and loss of identity may be in your future. The bodak on the card is forever mad, lost in a world of lunatics, insane asylums, and killers. Perhaps its influence signals that the world may make no sense to you as things unfold. But clarity of mind may still remain under the rest. That is our hope. And finally, the last omen in your future is one of strength through great diversity. The blacksmith represents those who can survive the trial by fire. But the, the forge's fire is so strong that it burns many to cinders instead. A dangerous event may be in your future. One that will require many sources of strength to overcome. It is in that diversity of strength that you will find your salvation. And as she kind of opens her eyes and sets her hands down on the table, she says, This is what the cards and the fates have to say. I do not know what your future holds. I do not know what the present holds. But the omens are surely there for you to read. I would like to state for the record that I think that baby's a bit too young to have gashed that bad. Just saying. <laughs> always, I gotta just gotta defuse this at the moment. Just, just, no, can't, not always. Can't let it. Just can't let it. Uh, so Xantor, so you're kind of um, you're you're just kind of left sitting there, you know, in the quiet with her, uh, with all these cards face up on the table. Uh huh. Thank you. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm not quite sure where to go from here. I mean, it it seems that if I if I do anything, I'll be lost, and I'll even probably lose my own mind. I I don't know if I have the strength in me to overcome everything that I've already lost as I continue to lose. I don't... The only thing the fates will... Or the only th I will tell you something that I think the fates will not. And that is that you must follow what you think is right. It may seem like you are lost now, but just because you wander does not mean that you are without a road forever. Today, let your mind be at ease, and when you see a moment that you think is right for you to step on a path again, perhaps, no, I, I believe certainly that path will be the one that you are meant to take. Okay, thank you. Then I, may I keep this forge card? Uh, she, um, she, uh, she kind of closes her eyes and sighs, she says, and then kind of looks at you with a smile, and she says, Of course, my child, take it as a token, a remembrance of what you may, what may be expected of you in the future. Thank you. So I take the card and I'm going to put it into my belt pouch. Sure. Uh, then I'm gonna go outside the tent, look around. All right. Let me just delete these. Nope. Come on. Delete, 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 delete. delete. Okay. I want to take it. Take card. Next. Don't worry about it. Uh, so you step out of the tent, and it's it was 
It was surprisingly quiet in the tent while the reading was going on, but now that you are outside, you kind of are caught up in the, the sounds and the noise of, you know, the games being played, the children running back and forth, the, the people, like, hawking their wares and barking for, you know, as uh, customers as they pass by, the, the celebration that's going on around you. Mm. I'm going to head towards the largest gathering of people to see what they're all looking at. Okay, sure. So, uh, for you guys, you are all, um, most of you have kind of gathered in and around the area of this ha the hagfish tent, uh, where drinks are flowing. Uh, you, um, you know, Balin, one of the one of the men kind of leans on your shoulder and says, Boy, friend, you, uh, you fancy... Fancy tossing a bit of coin on some of them uh, those lizard races? Lizard races? Lizard races, yeah. What kind of lizard? <laughs> green one? <laughs> How do you tell them apart if they get cross lanes? They're in, they're in a, a box. Look, do, do you want to gamble or not? Sure, I already lost one silver today. What's another five? Let's go. Sure. Yeah, he says, ha, that's a spirit. What's a festival without a little fun? It's losing money fun, but okay, let's go. <laughs> so as you guys kind of make your way into uh, what for you, um, uh, ah. Balin, is like your first gulp of fresh, non kind of seawater and body odor air in a while. Uh, you are sort of led across the, uh, across the, the ground to this area that's kind of set up where they have, um, you know, there's a little bit of penance and stuff. There's a, cr a crowd, a small crowd of men that are cheering and whatnot. As you make your way, you see there's like a, it looks like a table that's been set up with like these little, uh, wooden slats that divide it into like lanes. And, uh, when you get there, you see a bunch of men that are kind of throwing money around and cheering and... It looks like they're getting ready to bet on races between, it looks like, five different lizards. Where is this on the map? Uh, I don't know, it was somewhere around here. <laughs> somewhere, mm -hmm. I don't know. Somewhere around there. Oh, yeah. there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Not that far. The red square. Over here, then. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Rectangle. We're turned All right. All right, so, um... Given my my many many years of expertise in lizard racing, can I tell if any of the lizards look especially agile or adroit at running? Uh, roll me a nature check to see what you can tell. About <laughs> oh, this the is gonna go well. Okay. See? Uh, That's so the you. Um, the lizards all seem to be the same. They all appear to be some form of like a like an iguana or something like that. It's maybe a big, a large gecko. Um, uh, you're not too familiar with lizards. They're not. It's not your your shtick. But you can see um, one of them. You know, one of them looks a little bit chubby. Uh, one of them looks very very thin. Others kind of look a little a little wobbly. Um, one, you know, one of them kind of stands kind of weird. One of them has eight legs. It's actually a tarantula in a lizard <laughs> costume. <laughs> but there seems to be one that kind of stands out. So, the, as... you see, you see the, um, the names are on the, there are names, like, written on the, uh, the little piece of wood above each track. Um, one of them says, uh, uh says two socks. One of them says uh, fatty. One of them says no tail. Uh, one of them says uh, um, uh, Jarve, and the other uh, the other just says Corwin. Mm -hmm. Does no tail have a tail? Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Doesn't quite answer my question though. Does one of them stand out? Yeah. So. As... Uh, <laughs> so fatty is the very very thin one, uh, okay. and the one Corwin is the kind of chubby little one. It's the one that has the multi pass. 
Corwin. Corwin Dallas. Corwin Dallas. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah, I'll put down five silver on Corwin. I mean, I'll put down five silver on Corwin. <laughs> sure. Yeah, the uh, the guy proprietary. Proprietating? Is that a word? Proprietrix. It's a woman running the races. <laughs> nice. Proprietering? I don't know how you uh, how you'd phrase that. The proprietor of the races. He, you see him kind of collecting bets. He says, "Ah, right, get you, get, come on, get your bets in, get your bets in." And he's like taking the money and like depositing it into a little sack, like uh, at the end of each like each track where the the things. And he says, "Next race starting in two minutes." Can I, can I run over? Yeah, sure. Um, can I, <laughs> I, can I uh, do a nature check? To do, what do you want to find out? I want to see if there's anything I recognize that might be different about the lizards. Sure. Uh, how do I do this? Boop. Click on the word nature. nature. There you go. There's um, almost a 20 in there. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I mean, how f uh, how familiar are you with lizards? Uh, fairly, I live in the woods with them. Okay. Um, you know that you you know just or you know just by its coloring that um, uh, that uh, no tail has these kind of these kind of orange spots on him that you you know. Um, you, you you know because you've sort of seen him. He's not actually a local lizard. He's a sort of a breed of these that are found more in uh, more out in the east, sort of in the in the parched kind of dry lands of Parisia, uh, the the plains where the Shawanti roam. Uh, they tend to be pretty quick. Um, you notice you know that at least two of them, uh, Corwin and uh, Fatty, they look like they uh, you know. Uh, oh, and I'm sorry. Corwin, Fatty, and uh, oh. Tusak. Uh, they're all kind of... You know a little bit about them to be lazy. Uh, they, they don't move very much. They just kind of sun themselves. Which one was the one that had the spots? Uh, that would be No Tail. No Tail. And then what was the fourth one? Uh, oh god, I forgot the name. I totally... Sorry, I, did, I did too. Um, Yatos. I'm gonna call him Yatos. Yatos! <laughs> I can, I can Any... remember Yay Toast. Anything particular about Yay Toast? Um, it's delicious when you put jam on. God, no, I hate Yay Toast. It's disgusting. Uh, Yay Toast, by the way, is a caramelized goat cheese, and it is horrible. Oh, I thought you were saying Yay Toast. No, me too. Like G J E T O S T. Okay, I say you go with yay toast, like Y A Y T O A S T. I just well, wrote exploding that's what toast. I, that's what exploding. I say. That's what I say every time I have breakfast. I'm gonna walk over to to Balin, and I'm gonna I'm gonna whisper in his ear. I'm gonna say you should probably go for no tail. And I'll just kind of pan my 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 gaze over to said Drood. That would probably be advice well taken if I hadn't already put my money in that sack over there. <laughs> huh. Sorry. But I do appreciate the... Uh... Let me, who did you put your money on? Uh, Corbin Dallas. Corbin. Corbin. Mm. I'm going to whisper something to, the, uh, to Corbin. Okay. What do you want to whisper? Run fast, little one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're not using, like, speak, you're not using like, speak must, to animals. Must translate. You're, just, you're just whispering to me? Well, I mean, I don't know what the spell is. I could guess I could look it up. No, no, I'm saying, are, did you had had you intended to like use a spell or anything? Or no, I you, intend you just wanted to talk to him? I intended to talk to him. I don't. I'm looking at the druid stuff right now. Okay. Don't. Don't. Well, maybe not. I was gonna say, what? don't animals understand Sylvan even if they can't speak? I would think. 
Yeah, anyway. I think so. That's why I'm like, okay, I don't know if it's under the Druid or the Elves. <laughs> and thank you so much, Stormspec, for hitting that follow button. Welcome to the madness, my friend. Uh, and thank you for hanging out with us. You guys thank, are awesome. you. thank you. Thank While he's uh, right. looking we'll, up that, we'll, we'll I want to do you a... Whisper, uh... You use your Druid craft to, to whisper to him a little bit. What do you yes. want to do, Lycon? I want to do a uh, perception check to see if I notice anything. Basically, I'm just looking to see if the, the race is rigged in any way. Sure, go for it. And thank you so much, Gale Eyes, for hitting that follow button. Also, Gale. welcome, guys. You are awesome. Thank you for hanging out with us. I hope you guys are having a good time. That's a decent perception, Chef. It's, it's all right. Um, so you're looking you're looking to see if it's rigged. Any any ideas how yep. how that might be? Like anything you're looking for in particular? No, I'm just looking for something suspicious, just to see if they're you know anybody's trying to swindle anybody out of money. Electromagnets. Uh, this is out of the abyss. No, this is not. That may be. Uh, that may actually. I need to change the schedule on the page. This is Jed Regent, as you can see up in the title up there somewhere. Out of the abyss. Uh, it's gone. New new it's game. Exploded. It's all right. This is the fluffiest abyss I've ever seen. Everybody's yeah. so nice. There's a festival <laughs> and shit. Two more followers to 600. No, that's no two more to 560. <laughs> that's not how numbers work, my friend. That's, I do that all the Close time. I, I do yeah, but you're bad at math. <laughs> Pretty sure you got oh, the beat chop in that area of your brain. <laughs> so. Um, so you don't you don't see it's rigged in any way. Basically, what it looks like is it looks like they're just gonna lift up this wooden thing and like so they can all run down the track. And if they if they do like if they run, they run. Uh, there's nothing impeding them. Uh, obviously, the people could in theory like put their hands on the track or something. But you notice it would probably be uh... noticed. Yeah, yeah, they probably noticed that. Stormspec says, "Rip out of the abyss." Uh, well, don't don't fret because if you'd like to talk about out of the abyss, you're welcome to come hang out with me on Tuesday on my <coughs> show called Fuzzy Dice, where I take your questions and I answer DM topics. So yeah, uh, we'll talk about out of the abyss. I ran it. I, I rewrote some stuff for it. It's a fun campaign. Uh, anyway, so the did you guys want to do any last minute things uh, before the race gets underway? I'm just watching and chilling, cheering on for Corbin because for some reason he's cute and I like him. <laughs> I don't really know what's going on either. I, I keep telling, I keep ta uh, talking and whispering to Corbin okay. to encourage him. And he I have something me. I want to do, but it's after the race is almost done. Okay, so yeah, so the the people start shouting, and once the bets are in, and the man says, "No more bets, no more bets," and he's waving his hand over the track. Um, everyone, like the people who had bet, they're now all shouting at their like you know, at their respective lizards and just kind of mocking each other and hyping each other up. And as as the shouting hits a fever pitch, they lift the wood slat and... Okay. Uh, who did you bet on, Balin? Corbin. Corwin. Corwin. And, uh, Xantor, did you bet on anyone or no? I don't have any money. Can I bet plants? <laughs> <laughs> Here's some moss. All right. Uh, and the it looks like the one that ends up just, like, some of them start running, but the one that just bolts out of the track like a lightning bolt for some reason. Uh, also, uh, what's called? The, the one that Xantor is talking to does start running, but for some reason, like, a bat out of hell comes fatty zipping right over to the end and he's the one who ends up taking the uh taking all the money and also my uh hold on my headphones are messing up here which means i may have to i may have to fix nope desktop audio is still working okay that was just me sorry so, buddy i did what i could it's all right sad that fatty won it's it, you know it's it, the name is just to throw you really like Greenland. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like Greenland. Uh, okay, so um, one uh, as you guys are kind of you know kind of you know people are sharing their winnings, and dividing up the winnings, and you guys are hanging around, accepting your losses, and maybe maybe talking to each other a little bit. Um, you see, all of a sudden, 
you guys may catch a glimpse of something. Uh, it looks like Father Xantis has retaken the stage, um, and people are starting to notice. Um, it is it is basically like it, the morning has gone pretty quickly, and it is turning about noon time, uh, and. Um, as, uh, as you notice, the Acolytes are kind of wheeling this large covered wagon into the center of the square, like right, uh, right in front of the stage, uh, and Xantus kind of, kind of stands up and as he hushes, he says, uh, excuse me, everyone, excuse me, um, I'm sorry for disturbing your, uh, your revelry and enjoying the festival, but... I just like to recount a small parable. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, as many of you know, uh, Desna, the the beautiful goddess, uh, a long time ago she she came under a dire crisis, and it was against the dark uh, the dark gods that she struggled. She ended up falling to earth. Uh, wounded, damaged, and alone on this planet. Uh, but, but luck was with her as it always is, and a young boy, uh, one we all who we all all revere to this day, uh, a young blind child found her and nursed her back to health, and uh, when. When she had she had regained her power, she looked upon this boy's good good and selfless deed, and she rewarded him by letting him live forever as a beautiful immortal butterfly, an avatar of her own image. Uh, and it is in her name and in remembrance of her great events that we hereby commemorate the new. Sandpoint Cathedral in Desna's name, and as he as he says this, the uh, the acolytes kind of pull this tarp off the cart, and a there's a you notice there's a large cage in the cart, and it is uh, as they pull the, the thing off the o from the open top of this cage, like a furious swarm of swallowtail butterflies swarm into the air, just thousands of these butterflies, and just start spiraling in a riot of color uh, amidst a great cheer from the crowd. Uh, that sounds a little... Where, where is it? Uh... Yeah, no. Hey! Um, yeah, no. <laughs> the, uh, you know, and so as, as the butterflies kind of scatter into the air, you see the children that are kind of running off to catch them and everyone kind of clapping and smiling uh, as they... You know, the, these things swarm around and just add a little bit of color to the air as the festivities continue. Also, being noontime, everyone, uh, you guys include, you guys notice that everyone is just making a beeline towards the tavern's tents where it, you, it looks like food is going to be served. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <clears throat> Definitely going that way. Where's the food tent? Uh, oh, go ahead, talk, talk amongst yourselves. Well, the, no, the was... food tent that I know about is Amiku's tent down in the southern quadrant uh... thingy, where, where her icon is. Where she told you to piss off. Basic, kind of, yeah. <laughs> but she meant it in a nice way, you know, sort of. You know, you know how she is. <laughs> so, uh, so you see Balin kind of making a straight line towards uh, one of the tents. Did you guys want to follow him, or did you want to find your own food? Because you can't have any of mine. Hey, uh, Balin, I know I tried to help you win, but, uh, I have these twigs. Maybe you can buy me some food? <laughs> What? Uh, <laughs> I haven't eaten in three days, and nature sustains Aww. me. But I spent my one token with 
the fortune teller as she was able to help me on my purpose here. And now I realize, smelling all this food, that I I do want to eat something. I mean, it's no trouble. I, I can go back to the woods and nature will come be along. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. But you I'm going to follow the druid because he looks neat. You owe me. Alright. So you guys collectively make your way over to a Mako's tent where uh, the, the, what you've gathered, at least Balin, uh, you've kind of gathered that, um, first of all, the, the lunch everyone seems like seems to be uh, uh, everyone seems to be rushing to grab a plate, but um, it, is it a bread bowl? Please, God, tell me it's a bread it's bowl. Not I love a bread bowl. bowl. Uh, but it looks like it looks like the taverns, as as the smells of these food that this kind of hits you, um, it seems that everyone here is endeavoring to bring out their best dishes, um, you know, to draw in the most. Uh, the biggest crowd and the most people. Uh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, so you guys make your way over to a Mako's tent, and as you sort of push through the crowd a little bit, you know, people are trying to grab plates and bowls and stuff, you make your way up to the, uh, uh up to the front, and you see a Mako is kind of busy, just just sitting there, like, plating food as, and putting it on the table as people, uh, you know, as people grab plates, and she's having conversation with, uh, you know, with with some of the people that pass by, and as she kind of sees you, she waits, she says, Oh, uh, how are you guys? Uh, Balin, I see you've made some friends. I'm not sure I would go with that particular phrasing, but, uh, this gentleman says he's not eaten in three days. You think we could rectify this, uh, unfortunate condition? Oh, of course! Uh, here! And she kind of hands you two plates. Uh, she, basically the plate has, like, a, a large kind of piece of what looks like, like a, a it looks like some kind of very, like, spiced salmon, basically. Yeah. I'll take those two plates and hand them to Xantor. I start Don't shoveling hurt. all the food in, in the plate <laughs> into my mouth, including the plate. Don't hurt your stuff. <laughs> Oh, this is so good. <laughs> you realize how hungry I was. She smiles. She says, <laughs> "Slow down a little bit. You don't want to. I mean, it's the food is free, but we don't have enough for everyone to get second. It's free. Can I have some more? <laughs> oh. uh, maybe you can come back after the crowds already come through. I'll just stay here and wait. And then I go and I sit down in the corner, Indian legs down. I just wait, twiddling my thumbs. She says. Why don't you try, why don't you spend that waiting time going to visit to some of the other taverns? I know they're, they have their own offerings, though. I'm they sure. have food there, too? Yes. And then I run out the door. I run out the door to the next tavern. Thank you very much, Amigo. Can, um, since I gave him both plates, you think I could swing one for myself, or do I need to go take a hike and get food somewhere else as well? Of course. As he hands you a plate. Thank you so much. Kidding. <laughs> <clears throat> I didn't eat both the plates, did I? I handed you both, and you said you were just. You did. <laughs> I just ate it. <laughs> like a teenage boy. Pretty much. And I'll head back out and find a, a short barrel or cask or something to sit on and, okay. and nibble, because I I had thrown up so much in the last few days. And, Taking things very gingerly, especially if there's ginger in it, because that does help settle the stomach. So that's... All right. Yeah. She. Uh. You. You. You kind of basically start eating, and Amiko has made a fantastic curry spiced salmon. Mm. As if I wasn't hungry before. Now I definitely am. <laughs> um, I'm gonna walk up to Amiko and ask her if she has anything that's not a fish or an animal. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like dead. To, like when you say that, she looks like she was, she was about to, uh, she's about to say something. She's, oh, um, hmm. Well, what do you consider an animal? Hmm. Furry and walking? Uh, well, how about, how about fruits and vegetables? A fish isn't furry <laughs> or walking. 
moving of its own volition. <laughs> so not an ent. Uh, <laughs> she says, uh, well, I'm sure we can find you some, uh, I, I have a beef stew, I can take out all the beef if you'd like. How about some information instead? <laughs> that'll, sure, that'll fill you up. Darling, yeah. what, what, can I, what can I do for you? Are you from this town? You can, okay, so, um, the first thing you notice, well, you would have noticed about Ameko, and I will show you her picture again, um, is that she is certainly not Verissian. <laughs> that was a cool tattoo, yo. Uh, She's from she, Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> No, she, she is she is certainly not Verisian. Um, uh, she actually, uh, you've seen, uh, she looks a lot like uh, some of the people that you you spent time with at the Windsong Abbey. Okay, sweet. Yes, uh, the monks who you would know um, you would know actually quite a bit about their about them. Uh, the monks are uh, they're not Verisian, They are Tian. Um, they are from a country across the ocean called Tian Shan. Uh, some of them, not all of them, some of them are local, but basically the whole monk culture originated from that land across the ocean. Uh, and Ameko seems to be of the same lineage. Okay. So would she know anything about the monks where I was raised? You can ask her. <laughs> Do you know anything about the monks at Winsong Abbey? Uh, I, I know a little bit. I've not really been up there, but... I know, um... Well, what, what would you like to know? We'll see. I was just curious if you'd ever been. You look similar to the people I was raised with. <laughs> That's not insulting at all. Mm. She says, um, well, maybe, uh... Maybe just an appearance there, certainly. I certainly have no family there. No, uh, my, um, my parents, uh, my family, uh, is, is the Kaijitsu family. They're uh, one of the, the noble families in town. Uh, the way I understand it, my father had uh, something of a hand in, uh, in settling and starting this town to begin with. Um, but I've, I was raised here my whole life, except for a brief stint as an adventurer. Uh, I've never been to the Abbey, but I don't... I know of it uh, from stories. Since you're from here, would you happen to know if there's a woman around here named Shalalu? Or Shalilu? How do you say that? Shalalu. Shalalu. She says, of course I know Shalalu. She's, uh, she's, she's one of my best friends. Could you perhaps direct me in her direction? Uh, yeah. Um, I think the best direction I could give you is to just wait around here until she shows up. She tends to spend most of her time abroad, ranging in the in the hinterlands, uh, keeping the town safe and all that. She comes back every few weeks, but tracking her down out in the wild would be near impossible, considering. Well, even the best tracker wouldn't be able to find her since she spends most of her time trying not to be tracked by the things she's hunting. Is she expected back soon? Uh, not for a few weeks, maybe. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> but, um, you never know. She, she sometimes stops by unannounced. Uh, I, I just... I just enjoy the town for a little while. You don't have anywhere to be, do you? Not exactly. Well, you should, uh... <coughs> why don't you, why don't you, uh, once the festival's through, stay over at the tavern. Uh, you know I own the tavern, right? I do now? Yes. Oh, well then, uh, let me welcome you, uh, to stay at the Rusty Dragon Inn. It's the best tavern in town. Thank you. Uh, well, at least I say so. Um, and uh, if Shalalu shows up, that'll probably be the first place she'll come to visit. Wonderful. Thank you for your help. I'm going to meander around and watch more lizards. I hope to see you around sometime. 
uh, as she nods and kind of goes back to serving plates to people. Dead fishes? Yeah, well, I mean, you don't serve living fishes. Well, <laughs> typically not. Uh, so, uh, Xantor, I will just assume you make your way over to the hagfish because you, you kind of saw uh, see a crowd there and acquire yourself a fairly large bowl of lobster chowder. Ooh. Uh, this is now my second bowl of lobster chowder, but yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and stomach so, of uh, some food holding. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, just, uh, just, just for the sake uh, of expediency, uh, you guys, you guys enjoy your meals, uh, you know, the ones that you, the ones that you take. Uh, you mill around, you may be able to, you know, you may get back, uh, connect back with each other again. That's up to you if you decided you enjoyed one, uh, you know, the company of someone you had interacted with. Um, but the rest, like, the rest of the festival goes on much like the beginning did. There are games, there's gambling, there's shops to, you know, there's food, there's other things. So just keep a steady flow of just you know nibbling constantly throughout the day so that I never wind up salting. stuffed. But uh, yeah, basically, and you know, boiled rice and chicken, and uh, and then you know, slow sips on things. So I never quite get drunk, but I'm relaxed. Yeah, I'm never <laughs> full, but I'm sick. So, so um, as you uh, as, as the the sun is sort of kind of lowering, the sky is getting a little bit more orange, and the festival is entering its late afternoon uh, phase. Um, these people are not here anymore. But, uh, They're Father Zantis... bunch Zantis, of losers and amateurs. Yes. Right, go ahead. Father Zantis, uh, you notice once again, he kind of takes the central podium. Um, uh, well, you guys actually don't notice it, really. You're not paying much attention. What you do notice is... Uh, a sound like a crack, like cracking thunder. <laughs> no, I, I was hoping that was not. Yeah, the people on the stream are busy. Just cracking thunder. And that catches all of your attention. Um, and everyone, everyone kind of quickly, like, quiets down and turns their attention towards the, uh, uh, towards the stage, um, and as he's he's standing there, you guys are watching too. As Xantis is up on stage, he kind of uh, he kind of clears his throat. He says, <clears throat> and uh, as he kind of clasps his hands and begins to recite the first words of a uh, a Desnan prayer, um, all of a sudden. Uh, so the uh, the uh, you you hear a qu uh, you I guess Lycan and Xantor and a couple other people nearby would hear like a stray dog who may have crawled under a wagon nearby kind of bark uh, awake as the the cracking thunder woke him up um, and as the the hush quickly descends and everyone turns towards the central podium where the the beaming Father Xantis. As on the stage, clearing his throat, taking a breath to speak, suddenly, a woman's scream uh, slices through the uh, the air. A few moments later, another one, uh, and then another scream rises. Beyond them, there is a sur a sudden surge of strange new voices, uh, a high pitched tittering shrieks that uh, sound not quite human. Uh, the kind of the crowd nearby parts as something low to the ground races by uh, as the stray dog from before gives a yelp, this time not a bark, but it sounds like a, a, a yelp of pain. Uh, and then right near, right kind of nearby where Lycan is, uh, you see the dog kind of uh, stumble, like in Xantor, you see this dog stumble through the crowd and then collapse onto the ground with 
it's like blood flowing from its throat, uh, pooling around its head, and as it does, the strange raucous sound of, of some some weird song chanted from skrill, shrill scratchy voices rises above the din, uh, and let me. I'm waiting for this to start. Hold on. Arkley. Is it gonna play? I don't know. I may be out. Oh. I hear- I hear something. Yeah. Okay. So as the, uh, as the song- as the, the song starts playing, you guys can turn down your, uh, you, you don't need to have it at full blast, but- Make it stop! Make yeah. it stop! Uh, Sounds like good music. <laughs> I want that as a ringtone. Right? Yeah. Alright. So, um, as the, uh, as, as this is, uh, happening, you guys, n like, you guys notice these shapes that are, these things that are just rushing through the crowd, uh, out from under this, uh, under this cart, and they are charging into the crowd with weapons in the air, and, like, madness in their voices as the song rings out. Let me, uh... Right on that, right over here. Alright. And now I'm gonna turn this up on. I, I can't hear the music, so I'm just going to play in my head 15 birds and 5 fur trees from The Hobbit. Sure. <laughs> uh, this is way better. So, Quite as you guys, uh, as uh, Lycon and Mal uh, my Lycon and Xantor were close enough by, you guys would have noticed this. So, um, you are actually going to, uh, uh you, you kind of notice a single goblin standing over, like, standing over this dog, uh, licking blood off of its kind of crude blade. Um, And some weird goblins. I need we that is for that everyone is going to hold some initiative because we're gonna get right into this. Initiative? Yeah. Can we uh, turn that off for a second? Because it's really hard to hear anything else. Yeah, if you go to the uh actually I'll turn it down for you guys. It's an ad, is that supposed to be an ad? What's up? It's playing an ad. Ad? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's it? We'll, we'll just put a good, uh, Spanish music on. Let's get it. So everyone, uh, let's get everyone rolling some initiative, and we will, uh, we'll get this going. How, how do we make the, the awful ad thing go away? But... What ad thing? On the Twitch stream or on the Roll20? Okay. I'm muted again. No. I can, am I the only one that hears that? I don't know. Apparently. I think it's just inside your head again. Like, they're talking about a rocketeer named Pharaoh? That's not, that has nothing that's to do with That's Overwatch. Us. Yeah. That's an Overwatch commercial. <laughs> Where? I don't know if it's been open. I have no There's idea no what you're looking at. <laughs> yes, do you have a background app running on Twitch or oh, something? Oh, my god, I was like, why are the goblins talking about... Okay, sorry. <laughs> so loud and obnoxious. The internet is difficult. I'm like, where is it coming from? Okay. Well, I mean, sometimes I hear music that's not really there, so... <laughs> I'm sorry. What are we doing? Rolling initiative? Yeah. Um, before before you roll, make sure that you click on your token before you roll initiative. That way it'll put you into the initiative, the, the turn order. I didn't, I didn't do that, so... I did it! Yay! I did it properly! But I've got a 20! Yeah! Yeah, hey, but I mean... That. There we, we go. Have... Wow, that's even better. You got some great dice rolls. Mm, how do I do this again? You open up your character sheet and you find yeah. the says initiative. Yeah. Well, you, have, you have your character selected and then you click the initiative. The word initiative. Yeah. The one with the big circle and slash through it. No, the word initiative has no circle and slash. Oh, 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 gotcha. Right. Yeah. Ooh, there you go. Looks like me. Well, I mean, I rolled the initiative. Me. Well, I mean, I rolled, but it's not in the tracker. He got a 13. Yeah. Alright, so, as we 
sort it. Uh, it looks like Lycon, you were the closest to these events. You see these goblins just kind of rushing out from under this cart and into the crowd. What do you want to do? Um, are they rushing toward me at all? They're just rushing. No, out this one, the one nearest to you is like literally standing over this dog, kind of like cackling madly and swinging this uh, short sword in the air. <laughs> I am going to stand there with my mug of ale and hold my action. Okay, uh, for what? Or till, for what? Till when? Um, which one rolled? The, is the one next to me going first, or? Uh, you, you have no idea. I'm gonna hold my action until the goblins have gone, until they have all. All gone, so they should be like basically until everything's at the end of the Yeah, perfect. Okay. So and doesn't that move him to the yeah, end of the yeah. thing in the next round? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so this goblin right here is going, you actually, um, you actually see, uh, like, um, you see kind of racing from this one. This one has not just a sword, but also a, uh, a torch, and he is running this way after, a, like, a person, uh, and he is, like, swinging his torch wildly, like, <laughs> like, try, basically driving this, uh, this person, this, uh, festival goer, away. Um, and he will make an attack against that guy. Um, let's change this up. Uh, it doesn't hit, but he's just whipping it wildly through the air. Ruin. <coughs> so you, you heard, you can hear the screaming, and you haven't seen exactly what's going on, but you've Screams and you can see kind of people panicking in the center of the, the square. Mm -hmm. um, is the goblin by the dog the one that's closest to me? Probably. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna head that direction, pulling out my um, my uh, thing that I have, my warhammer. And uh, but at thirty. Speed of 30, I can't. Are these five foot squares? Yeah. Okay, so I probably can get there. Mm. Wait. Five, 10, 15. No, I can't. Um, so, <laughs> can't get quite that far. You can do a running that, leap. Okay, I think I can get about there. Uh, when in doubt, by the way, when in doubt, if you want to check your movement, click and hold your token, right? So you're, like, about to move around, but in the square uh, that you're in, press spacebar, and while you're still holding it, move it to the next square and press spacebar, and then spacebar in each square that you want to move through. And you, to it, and you can, like, plan your whole path and like, count the... the uh, yeah. Interesting. And thank you, Mythoxis, for hitting that follow button. Welcome to the madness, my friends, and welcome to this goblin festival now. This is a festival of goblins. Um, <clears throat> so, okay. Well, since I can't get all the way there, but I still have my plate. Um, yeah. Gonna, you know, I've got my, my warhammer in one hand and the plate in the other, and I'm just gonna be like, um, let's see. The law shit face! And throw him, throw the plate <laughs> at him. Roll me, um, hmm, give me a dexterity check. <clears throat> Yeah. Your your plate I... just clunks this thing like boom right in the head as it's like not not even looking at you and the gum just... <laughs> and, and does he then turn and, and look this way? He's just like he's just like Bear in mind I can't holding... see you, so he, Oh well, yes I can, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, he's like <laughs> holding his head and like swinging the sword like blindly at no one. So while he's, you know, doing that, I'll be like, come here. Okay, hey, kitty, bear in mind there are, like, people running back and forth between the two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if you get his attention. Um, okay, anything else you want to do, or is that it? Um, uh, I'm sure, pretty sure that everyone knows, but just in case the people behind me are too busy stuffing their faces and haven't quite figured it out yet, I'm going to scream, GOBLINS! All right. That'll be it. There's a troll in the dungeon. Kismet, you are nearby. 
but you haven't you haven't actually seen the goblins yet. You may have caught a glimpse of that something going on, but all you notice is everyone is panicking right now. Is there a certain direction people are running, or they're gonna be is it just the, yeah? At the end of the turn, people are gonna people are gonna actually run. They're all like trying to get away from this. They're basically run. Most of them are running like in this direction, in this direction. Boy, um, I'm gonna try to get a bit out of the way because I'm uncomfortable with crowds. So what do I do? I like do the do. So can I just move? Yeah, you can. You can move individual. Like you can just go like hold it. Like I thought that you told me to go like one, two, three. If you want, or if you can pick it up like while while you're holding it, right? Like before, yeah. without releasing it, and press space bar in every square you want to move through, and that'll count each space. Cool. Okay. So I think I'm gonna try. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Stop it, the bad mouse. <laughs> Just, I want to go here. <laughs> Are you gonna go right over there? Yeah. Okay. I feel like that's kind of out of. Okay. Did you want to do anything? No, I'm gonna chill out because I don't understand why everybody's freaking out, and I kind of want to be out of the way so I can observe. Okay. And not get dead. You know what, uh, just so you don't waste it, I'll let you hold your action until you can get a clear view, and then okay. actually, act. like, you can, if you, if you ever, like, if you ever want to do that, you can, t you can ready an action for a specific trigger, so, like, if you okay. can't see the enemy, but you know there must be something, you can say, like, I want to ready an action until I can see an enemy to shoot at, and okay. then once that happens, you can actually take your action. Okay, perfect, I'll do that then, thank you. Alright, Xantor, you are nearby and just kind of... Just catching up with the situation as you are still holding this bowl of chowder. What do you want to do? The, uh... Oh, okay. Where... The goblin that attacked that that NPC, where is where are they? He's all the way on the other side. Uh, he's all the way over here. Mm, okay. Uh, I'm gonna, gonna... I'm gonna go up next to the goblin that killed my dog friend. And, dog I'm, gonna, friend. and I'm gonna cast uh, Poison Spray. Sure. Uh, let me check. Poison spray. Just a. Uh, does poison spray have a range, or is it just a s five foot? Uh, Ten feet. Says in the box. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, poison spray against him. He has to make a Constitution save. So here is his Constitution save. He gets a nat twenty. Um. Damn. Wow. Is it for half? What a or jerk! Is it, is it against full? What? Is it for half or is it against full? Uh, let's see. I'm checking right now. Poison spray is um, creature must. must oh yes, half save against full damage. Okay. Yeah. So you uh, you kind of go to spray, but he just sort of ah, like duck covers his head head with his hands and sort of ducks under it and it some of the poison hits him but he just kind of ah, shakes off mm -hmm. um okay i'm gonna throw the room the bowl of food in my hand at his head <laughs> <laughs> since i saw someone else do that successfully <laughs> okay yeah you just whip it at him just chuck it at him uh okay goblin's turn now um this one here is going to uh, he is going to actually make an attack against the uh, guy that one uh, just a person rushing by uh, for a 14, which will actually hit. I thought that was the damage. I was like, oh god, this guy is hurt. <laughs> is it just me? Can I not see the damage there? No, there's no number. It's blank. Yeah. Oh man, okay. It'll just do, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the scimitar, like, he, he cuts this person, um, this person's leg, and I'll actually mark this person in red. Um, so, like, the goblin, as this person's running by, just cuts their leg with a, with a swipe from their sword, and you see the, the festival go, like, the citizen just drop, uh, to one knee and scream in pain, and is now, like, 
kind of stuck in the center of this square with people rushing by. Uh, uh, what a jerk. No, right? <laughs> And the other goblin, this one here, Xantor, is going to lunge at you uh, because uh -huh. you, you attacked him. Um, actually, he's actually going to, uh, he's actually going to not slash at you. He's going to kind of attempt to barrel into your legs and take you, like, tackle you to the ground. With, with Apple, so that's... What I gotta roll to get through that? No, it's just, uh, it's a, uh, yeah, it's, it's an opposed strength check. So roll, roll, me, a, roll me a strength check. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't, how do I roll the strength check? Just click the word strength. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Right, what is, oh, oh, congrats. He only has to beat a one. Let's see if he can beat a one. Nice. He oh, can God. beat a one. So you are you are completely unprepared for it as this goblin goes Rah! and grabs your legs and like as he hits you, you're just like you're just like leaning over from having thrown this bowl of stew and it just barrel he barrels you over with you kind of slamming into the ground hard on your back. And he is now he's kinda of standing like let's go of your legs and is standing above you with this sword like raised in the air like I like he's gonna bring it down next turn. Because uh, you were hungry. Yeah. So you are prone. Uh, Lycon, what do you want to do? All right. So we've got Xantor who is prone, and the other goblin is either on top of him or in the square next to him. I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. All right. I am going to go after that one with. My mug of ale in one hand and my battle axe in my other hand. <laughs> Dual wielding. <laughs> Boom. I'm only attacking with the battle axe, but, okay. I, but I am going. So you want to attack the goblin that's like on top of him? Yeah. All right, cool. Go for it. Technically, if it's on, on the same space as him. So. Okay. I just clicked my uh, weapon I want to use, right? Yes. And I failed here. An eight. Not going We're on to a roll. do it. Yeah, eight. Not gonna do it. Um. So as you as you swing your battle axe, you kind of realize that you're not. You don't really want to bring it down and possibly hit this guy who is not a goblin. And so you kind of unconsciously check your swing, and the goblin just ducks under it, uh, still getting ready to uh, to slash at your friend. Uh, anything else you want to do? Um. Thanks. Now I'm good. <laughs> okay. Top of the I round number on two. Uh, before the, the round ends, these people are going Fight. to uh to rush out screaming. They Ashley can't... still has her role, by the way, because she. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as these people are rushing out, she will get a glimpse of this goblin the on top dog. of the centaur. So, uh, I'm gonna go heal the dog! Should have, like, just stayed in the abbey. Holy shit. <laughs> and thank you so much, Worm Drink, for hitting that follow button. Welcome to the madness, my friend. Thank you so much. Uh, so, Kismet, as these people rush out of the way and continue fleeing, uh, you have a glimpse of this goblin with sword raised on top of Xantor. Oh, good. Um. Why, I'm not, am I close enough to do anything? Uh, let me check your sheet. You should be. You cast spells, you should be able to hit from that distance. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, why, I don't know why your spell thing is empty. I thought we put spells in there. I can't <laughs> even remember anything about your character, so... She's a warlock. Or, oh. No, I'm, that's, uh, uh. It's just sorceress. The other one was a warlock. I mean, I don't know how to play either one of them, but... Oh, I, uh, I, what spells I, I, I've got... Ray of Frost, Shield, Ice Knife, Chill Touch, Shocking Touch. You can use all those. When in doubt, go to the SRD, which is the, um, go up to the top on the right and click that I, where it says Compendium, and just type in the name of the spell you want to look up. So, for example, let's look at Ray of Frost. Uh, Ray of Frost. 
is uh, a a ranged attack, uh, ranged spell attack hits for one d8 cold damage and slows right. the target by ten feet. So that's that's an attack you can do. Yeah, cause it, let's do that because it reduces our speed. Okay. Do you want to move closer? Or do you want to stay where you are? Um, I'm gonna stay away from the dead dog, cause ew. Yeah, Ray of Frost has a 60 foot range. Okay, so I just clicky clicky. Uh, it, uh, you don't, well, it's not in your spell book, um, so. Oh. oh, it is, no, it is. 11 is your spell attack. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, so you're, uh, you're, you fire a Ray of Frost and it strikes this goblin. Uh, because he is, he's kind of braced on top of, uh, on top of Xantor, so he can't really dodge much, out of the way much. So you blast this beam at him. Go ahead and roll me the damage. You just click the um, Ray of Frost on the, in the chat. No. Four. Yeah. And this thing, this goblin is struck in the chest by a frigid beam of ice as you see kind of crisp ice crystals creep up his body as he goes ah, ah, and he almost kind of topples over off of Xantor. Yay! Anything else you want to move or you want to stay with that? No, I'm, I'm, I'm good being <laughs> back where I am with my seven hit points. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so, as we move to the goblin, this one is, as the person he slashed at, uh, kind of rushed away, he is going to proceed with his flaming torch and attempt, like, you see him kind of rush up to this tent, and he's, like, swinging his torch around against the canvas of the tent, trying, probably trying to set this thing on fire. That's also familiar. Yeah, I was going to say that. Uh, I remember that. <laughs> uh, Balin, what do you want to do? I would very much like to run up to this place where this uh, goblin is standing over a person who is a friend of, not of mine that I have had for the food. <laughs> In other words, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to, you know, tee up and go for the long drive and, and see if I can knock said goblin into next week. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> Seven. No. <laughs> we are just. I don't even know. We're. I'm so dead. Yeah, a seven. Uh, actually, because he because he is uh sort of still on top of the like straddling on top, you can definitely get advantage on your swing against him. Okay. Because he's he's not really he's not really in much of a position to to, to dodge. Why didn't I get advantage on my swing? You did. I think you rolled a. Oh, I missed that. Whatever. Don't worry. It's a twenty and an eight. It's, it's okay, all good. No worries. <laughs> uh, so you can you can go ahead and take a crack at him. Let's say the the, the frost. Why not? There, there's a one. All right. So why don't you tell us how you crack this goblin in the head and uh, bring him down? Well, it's it's very important to decapitate someone with a hammer. It, it's just <laughs> it's an amazing sight. And so I'm going to knock this guy's head off and at his buddy standing over there immediately to the. You've got a point first. You've got a point. Oh, like, that's right. David the outfield. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wish I spoke other. I mean, I do speak another language, but it's gnomish, and I don't know what gnomish sounds like. So, <laughs> basically, if I spoke Goblin, I would just turn to him and say, Here, catch, you know, in, in Goblin, and knock this dude's head right at him. Alright, cool. So, as you, uh, as you smash this Goblin's head, like, again, these Goblins, if you haven't seen them, they look, uh, they have these big, kind of melon-like heads, so you just... <sighs> crack this thing right off, uh, and this goblin slumps down on top of, uh, uh, Xantor's body. Ugh. <laughs> Spurting what little bits of blood left in him. Black, tarish, kind of. You stare down his neck at all of his organs slowly see linking the, like, least gross thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, so, Xantor... 
you what do you want to do? You want to push this goblin off you and get up? Oh god. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna push the gut. Well, I have to. I'm gonna push this goblin up off of me, and then I see that he's still attacked, and then that other goblin is attacking uh, the nearby person. Can I click this thing away? There we go. Uh, how many? How do I? How do you do the feet distance? I wanna. I wanna go to that space other bar. goblin. But space bar. Just pick your token up and hit space bar in all every space. No, you have, you have to be holding your token and hit space bar. Like, while you're holding it. Don't let it go. Like that? No, no, no. Hold, click and hold the token, and while right. you're holding it, hit space bar, and then move it over one space, and hit space bar, and don't let it... Hey, like that. You hit space bar in every space you want to go to. Okay. Um, yeah, that... Alright, I want to go here. Okay. This one is by the way. And I'm going to... I'm going to cast Cure Wounds, so that this guy can flee and get away. Uh, do you want to you cast that after? Do you want to deal with the goblin before or after? Because you probably want to deal with the goblin before. It's job security with the goblin. <laughs> Cut him, heal him, cut him, heal him! <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so you're saying, alright, um... I, I'm going to go ahead and... do 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 Hmm. I'm gonna slash at the uh, goblin with my shimitar. Scimitar. Go for it. Nice. That is nice. a natural nice. 20. So Beautiful. Go ahead and roll. I'll go ahead and that. We'll see how much damage you do with the nat 20, <laughs> but it should be enough to, to destroy this goblin. Would I click the scimitar? Yes. Click it, it'll automatically do it. No, wait. Oh. Yeah. All right, so you you kind of bring your scimitar back and you just sink it right into this goblin's chest as it's going for kind of sees you coming and at you slash it outwards. There's like a spray of goblin blood as this big kind of melon head is like all over you, all over you, blood all over. Oh yeah, lots of it. Visceral too. It's uh. Oh man, you don't even know, I, I played this one game where I had to describe exploded, like zombies that exploded. And I, I think I successfully made one of the girls explain vomit because she could not take the zombies. <laughs> I'm good at that, man. I'm good at the, the, the gross. Uh, okay, so you slaughter this goblin. <clears throat> There's just a spray of blood all around. Anything else you want to do? Oh, I, I can't take an action to cure this, this not, person. Not this turn, no. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll kneel down next to them and be like, don't worry, I'll take care of you. Alright. As Koya's words ring in your head, this goblin is out. Uh, this goblin is out. So, Lycon, it is your turn. And that dude is way the hell over there? He is. Trying to light a tent on fire, it seems. Ugh. <laughs> uh. See, I can only move 25, and these are, what, 5 meter? 5 feet, yeah. You could leap across the cart, though. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, Do we have music going in the background? Does this well over here have uh, buckets and such? Yeah, uh, on roll 20 there's battle music, um, and I'm playing some also for stream. Okay, I, I've got a couple of texts that maybe it's a bit loud that we're kind of low, but I don't know. Yeah, no, it's, it's fine. Okay. If, if you guys, if it is too loud, if you're you're hanging out in chat, feel free to let me know, because uh, uh, I really can't judge, like I have no way of judging what it sounds like yeah. on stream, so. And otherwise, we don't care what you think. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, please click follow and... Yes, tell me and I will turn it up. SUBSCRIBE! <laughs> Like I had a couple people. That, one 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 of my buddies said I was giving them a headache. It was so loud. That's, like yeah, that's fine. Wow. No, no, please tell me that. Like I I yeah. need to adjust it on the fly, but it's uh it's it's hard to tell without. Well, it's, yeah, it's feedback. hard to tell. So anyway, uh, Lycom, what are you doing? Um, 
Has he set the tent on fire, or is he going to set the tent on fire? If he hasn't yet, he probably will succeed soon. Alright, I'm gonna actually uh, run towards the well to see if I can get some water. Vasa? Sure. <laughs> Thanks, Ecto. So, let's see. One, two, three, four... Twenty-five. Okay. Do you want a double move over there? Um, I don't actually know what that does. Uh, you can just cheat. You can use your, use your, use your standard action to move. Again. Okay. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and get right up. Okay. Not in the well, but on it. So, I, and I'll, I'll let you start kind of grabbing the rope to maybe pull a bucket out. You're not going to be able to actually get a bucket of water until next turn. Okay. Uh, okay. So, Lycon rushes over to the well. Kismet, what do you want to do? As you see. The uh, the rest of I don't oh there you are it looks like the rest of the uh, the group Balin and Xantor are kind of rushing into the fight. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna head that way too because I'm annoyed <laughs> that they messed up the games. I was having fun watching those. Um. So I mean, I guess all I can do is move right now, right? Because they're the little fire pyro goblins far away. We should still be. I mean, you got what a sixty foot range on Ray of Frost and everything. Yeah, you could hit them. Yeah, you move do a I little closer. To, can I use it twice? Yeah. To do uh, oh. to do what? I didn't know if I, I could use a spell twice. If it's a cantrip, yeah, you can use yeah. it as many times as you want. Okay. Um. Can I move up a couple and then shoot the little bugger again, or attempt yeah, sure. to? It's also a 60 foot range, so as long as you're within 60 feet, you can shoot him. <laughs> that wasn't 60 feet, but 15, 15, 20, you, you, sure. If you go over to the left, uh, you click that thing that looks like a, a long rectangle. Uh, ruler? You, that's a ruler. Yeah, it's a ruler. Measure it in line <laughs> and it'll tell you. Well, it doesn't look like a ruler. It looks, it looks like, like a comb. A comb. <laughs> yeah, it looks yeah. like like, like the comb. Yeah. kind of thing. It, you comb your hair. So you barely have to move to get in position to attack. Yeah, you okay. can just jog up a little bit and be fine to shoot him. I mean, right up next to me and you're there. Uh, uh, yuck, dead dog. Yeah. Alright, and then... Where's my happy little ruler? Ha! Yeah, that's good Dude. enough. Okay. So let those... Go ahead and fire at him. He's not paying attention to you. Okay, sweet. I want to do the thing. No! Oh, no we lost our video. <laughs> it was like, that is not the thing you want to do. Yeah. Well, so it's been a gaming mouse and it's got all these fun little... Oh my god! <laughs> and, yeah. Whoopsie! There we go. And I just hit the... Oh I hit... shit. And now you need to mute your... As I got Gotcha! Thank Unechoed. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and roll the uh, the frost thing, frost ray of frost. Uh, I've reset everything. Um, yum. Bloop. A twenty-two nice. will definitely hit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Super nice. Ready, Dynafire. All or right. <laughs> you uh, you kind of line up your shot. Uh, actually, why don't you tell us how you line, how you fire, like what your ray of frost looks like. Um, a frigid beam of blue white light. No, I was saying like how do you <laughs> like what is it what is it what does it look like when you My cast the spell? Jigs. <laughs> um, not much. I was raised with monks That's what and she told said. me not to be flashy. <laughs> <laughs> so I try to draw as little attention to myself as possible. Okay. So you so know just like, like X Men from or Jinx from X Men. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> All right, so you you snipe this goblin in the back, and he's like, like lurches forward as this beam just hits him right squarely between the tiny little shoulder blades, uh, and he is jarred for a second in his quest to light this tent on fire. Uh, going to the top of the round, people are rushing into the. Uh, you see them out of the corner of your eye, rushing into the doors of the cathedral as Father Xantis is kind of ushering them in. Um, and uh, these guys have long start, you know, are fleeing this way. They're pretty much everyone's pretty much gone at, uh, from the festival grounds at this point. 
Um, top of the round with this goblin. He is going to, uh, he's going to actually take it, just chuck his, the, the torch, like, tumbling up on top of the roof of this, uh, of this tent, and then pull out his sword and kind of, with rage in his eyes, uh, he yeah. <laughs> like, ah! rushes forward towards you guys, and he's not going to be able to make it anywhere towards you this round, but... Poor thing. He's slowed too, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. So he's just ten feet less. All right, Balin. What? Oh right. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I still want my saltines. <laughs> Dead dog. <laughs> Wait, thirty feet. Right? Yes, yeah, thirty feet. Okay. So <laughs> I'm screwing everything up. No, that's just, no, damn it. <laughs> it's, it messes up, right? A little bit. I, I can't even get it to do it, so. Ha. Okay, so I can get there. And, um, uh, uh, that'll be my movement. I am going to, uh, brandish my, uh, my, my warhammer in my hand with, with the little bits of, of, you know, the goblin-esque brain and and various tissues that are on the thing and be like come on we little man no scottish <laughs> not scottish <laughs> there russia come on yay uh, <laughs> yeah, but at the same time uh while i'm moving over there i want to you know kind of look around and make sure that you know are there any others that are coming out from any these freaking wagons been hiding there the whole time. Uh, roll me a perception Peeing check. on carrots and potatoes that I want to eat. Roll me a perception oh, that's check. depressing. Perception check. <laughs> I have a minus one to that, so this will be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the only, I mean, so as you kind of quickly look around, you notice that this, that this square is not the only place you've seen noise coming. You hear noise coming from. I see noise. Jesus, what yes. kind of a perception roll was that? No, uh, <laughs> it's you. You hear noise coming from all over the town. Mm. Oh God! Oh goody! Okay. We have to finish up here and hurry. That would be my. Okay. Uh, Zentor, what do you want to do? I'm gonna. I'm already kneeling down near this person. And I'm gonna cast cure light wounds, uh, cure wounds okay. on this person. I'm gonna tell him get to safety. So wait, uh, oh yeah, cool. Yay! Right? That's all I have to do. <laughs> You're better. Om nam shivai. Om nam shivai. So as you uh, you kind of place your hands on this person's wounded leg. Uh, and channel your druidic energy into, um, you know, into this, into their wound. Uh, their trousers are still kind of stained with blood, but uh, the wound itself begins to close up. And as you, as they kind of stand, like, you know, use your shoulder to help stand up. He says, oh, "Thank you, friend. I, I thought I was a goner with that thing." Shut up and get to the chapel. That's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Nice. Shut up. Go. Uh, <laughs> you you kind of shove him out of the way, and he starts limp, you know, hobbling away uh, from the the, uh, the court, the festival square. Anything else you want to do? Do you want to move? Do you want to? Yeah, I'm. Uh, can I mean, I, I guess I have to still stand up, and then can I? How close can I move on that action? Or after that action, I want to move towards the goblin. Uh, so you used your standard action to cure, so you can move your full movement towards him, and then as a swift action you can, I don't know, you can do something, like, something simple that isn't an attack or anything like that. Oh. Okay. Uh, hold on, math. Um... Uh, da, 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 da. 
35. Right? Yeah, okay, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and move towards the, uh, the goblin fellow here to uh, prepare to fight him. Undo that. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna position myself. Wait. One second. It's I, I want to position myself well. I want to block us from... There we go. 35. Yeah, I'm going to move maximum distance and position myself. Okay. Position myself blocking the chapel from him. There we go. That's fine. Alright, Lycon, you uh, you can use your standard action uh, to haul up... The, like, Well, all you, you can use your swift action to haul up this bucket. What do you want to do with it once it's in your hand? Um... Is the tent on fire? Did he ever actually catch it? Uh, there is a torch that is on top of the tent, and it is, it is gonna, like, starting to spread. Okay, but he's also, like, 15 feet from me. Mm -hmm. Um, could I drop the bucket and throw a dagger at him? Yeah, sure. You could, you can, you don't even have to drop the bucket. You can hold it in one hand. Okay, well, I'm gonna keep the bucket, and then I'm gonna try <laughs> to throw my dagger at him. And that's a craptastic roll all around. I think you got this. Uh, yeah, an 11 is not going to do it as you just whip a dagger and it, he just rushes right past it. Does it hit Xantor instead? No. <laughs> you won. You rolled a 1. Well, there's two 1s there. No, not, that's Drops not the same it on thing. his foot. <laughs> okay. Alright. Oh. Uh, yep. Alright, and as we slide down the turn order, Kismet, uh, it is your turn once again. Okay, so... Little dudes, is is he still fairly healthy? Uh, you you smashed him with the uh, with a bolt, but he's he's angry. He's still looking for a fight. Kai, I would like, although I think, <laughs> <laughs> let me see the thing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, that's good. We're good here. Um. Um, let's do... Oh. Not that. Right. Did you fall asleep? What's up? Let's just do Ray of Frost again, because that seems to be working for me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Go for it. Bloop! Alright, a 16 will hit. Yay! Ooh! Nice maximum damage. Them. So why don't you why don't you tell us how this goblin uh, falls to your your frost beam? Gracefully. <laughs> <laughs> Des describe how he dies. Well, you're the one with the like gross effects. I feel like yeah, but it's your kill. You can you you can describe it for us. Okay, since it was maximum damage, it's gonna hit him in the chest, and he's gonna waller around for a minute, going, like, "Oh my god, it hurts so much! I'm a goblin!" And then he's gonna explode into little particles, like Terminator 2 style. All right, so as you as as you come <laughs> to this beam and you just whip it at him, he's rushing forward. It slams straight into his chest, and as he's slowed again, you know, as the frost kind of the crystals form around him, he um uh, yeah, let me turn those smashy sounds down. Uh, he um. Second. Up. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so a as it hits him, all of a sudden, like he he just kind of keeps trudging and trudging and shaking for a second. And right next to you, Zantori, you notice like all of a sudden he just. <laughs> You're like, welcome. He's just sent blown back. How do I keep getting covered in stuff? <laughs> Every one of them is. Oh my god! <laughs> when when the last one died, Life I remember thinking. Man. I remember thinking, God, I hope all of these die on him. How? <laughs> 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 oh, just... My prayers have been answered. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> all right. And as this goblin dies painfully. Uh, you guys kind of look around and realize that, um, there is, there is, like, you're kind of left alone in this, uh, in this festival square. The, there's no immediate goblins that you can see around you, uh, but, uh, 
um, they're like there's you can now hear noise like screams and shouting and stuff coming from around town as you guys take a second to catch your breath you look around you can see pillars of smoke uh, rising from other parts of the town free food oh, yeah. oh, oh uh, uh, does it sound like it's louder from any particular direction or is it just kind of uh, roll me a perception oh. check okay <laughs> Minus one to my perception. Yes, thirteen. Uh, it looks like, as far as you can tell, the smoke and the ma the majority of the screams are concentrated. Uh, so the north of the city is this way. Uh, mm -hmm. It sounds like they're mostly coming from this way. Yeah. Okay. I thought this was the whole city. No, this. Oh is, no. no! No, this is just no. square. <laughs> um, so. As you uh, uh, as you guys are catching your breath, do you want to do anything? Uh, did I perceive anything more since I had a? No, dude. you you got you got pretty much the same thing. You can hear the sound of clanging uh, and shouting. Um, definitely, like from the sounds of it, it looks like some like there there is fighting going on other places in the city, not just here. Can I I'm roll gonna... a perception check? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, you're pretty much going to come up with the same information. Oh, okay. Unless you roll a one, and then then you're not going to hear anything. <laughs> you lose your <laughs> eyes. La 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 la. la. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna run up to the well and wash my face off with the bucket <laughs> because it's either that or all the food I ate is coming right back up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw the bucket in his face. Yeah. <laughs> what about the water within it? No, not the water within it. Just the bucket. The water <laughs> whole bucket. Just hang there in the air. And I'm gonna yeah. throw the bucket at him. <laughs> Wait, is the tent still on fire? Yeah, the tent is on fire. Yeah, w Worm pointed that out for us. <laughs> no metagaming chat, please. Don't do it. <laughs> um, yeah, there's fire. See, fire. Is everybody safe? Is anybody injured? Uh, the only people immediately around you are these new acquaintances that you seem to have made. I think he was asking in character. Yeah, yeah, that's I was asking, yeah. No, no, I, no that's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, there's no, I was, there's no civilians around you. They've all fled. No, I'm asking the party. I'm yeah, asking them. Asking. So there's nobody in the tent right now. <laughs> no, there's no one in any of the tents. They pretty okay. much all fled. Are you guys okay? Very well. Very well, thank you. No damage. I'm, I'm fine. But we need to put that out, and we need to help these other people. We need to help the other people first. The, there, there's no one in the tent. We can let it burn. Mm, it may spread. Ah, uh, fine. Tent. <laughs> You're just like, I finally get a tent on fire. Let it burn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Hmm. Bird bitches. That was a totally different crazy man from another crazy place. <laughs> Who was stuck in right. space with food all the time. All right, so then we'll work with the bucket and... And, uh... I'll I'll go grab some other buckets to see if we can get some water. Put the mm -hmm. tent out. Okay. Uh, as uh, I'll I'll say you guys kind of manage to uh, manage to quickly uh, throw some water on the spreading fire. It's as the tent suffers definitely some damage, but not not too too much damage. Um, and uh, as you um, one second. Uh, as you guys are, uh, are are doing this, you uh, you see you notice that um, the 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 ch the church door is open and you can see Father Zantis kind of leaning out of it. He says, uh, "Oh, uh, friends, uh, come here, please." This uh -huh. better, better not be another sermon. I swear to God. <laughs> I don't, I don't swear to God, but anyway, <clears throat> start making that way, but it's like, there are other people to help. Do you need us in there right now? No, 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 I was, uh, I was going to see if you needed any healing, any help, uh, but, uh, and uh, as he's, as he's talking, um, you, uh, you hear, you hear a, like, uh, more barking and goblet, like, shrieking of goblins 
very, very close at, not, not very far from where you guys are. In fact, it seems like a ton of, like, most of the commotion seems to have moved off in the city, but all of a sudden a cacophony of goblin yells and bar dog barks start emanating from, to, to your north. Oh, good. I want to be away from that. <laughs> Smart. Right, then I guess go. we're going. Uh... We get, we need to go north, guys, and help the people. All right, let's do, do it. Do we have to? <laughs> you don't have to, but it's probably safer with all of us than it is trying to do this on all on your own. Blah, 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 blah. Something. <laughs> Tongue tied there. I'm not sure what the hell happened. That sentence got away from Russian. me. That was legit. Yeah, Russian. that's right. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm gonna follow these yokels, but slightly behind, so I don't get. Slimed. All right. So as you guys, uh, as you guys kind of rush uh, to along the north road, uh, you can actually see the gates, the big stone gates that you guys came through to Sandpoint, looming just up the street. And as you guys rush up, let me uh, let me copy all your tokens. Um, and also, let me copy this because I need not the blood. I need this. Um, we're dragging the dead dog with us. Yes. <laughs> arr, arr, arr. I uh, should have rest. Should have healed it. Let me, uh, let me, let me put that on there and that on there. Should have healed the dead dog. There. Like. So as you guys, uh, as you guys rush up the street, um, <clears throat> let me move these out of the way so I can actually move my my page. Uh, you are right here. <laughs> And as you look up, you see, um, you see what looks like a goblin, kind of uh, riding like a goblin that is mounted on a large, like a, a dog. It looks like a dog, but it's mangy, <laughs> it's hairless, and it's ugly. And he's got a long polearm in his hand, and you can see him kind of the polearm is jammed down into the into the body of a a bright golden Labrador Retriever. On the ground, uh, who? These guys are jerks. Uh, well, they're sloppy eaters, but oh, you don't mean the dog. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, and they're they're actually like they're, you can see other goblins. They're standing on carts and boxes and stuff around, keeping their distance, but they are cheering very very loudly. Um, Lycon, you notice that the cart that they're standing in at. As soon as you see it, you recognize it, which also makes you recognize the dog. You know the dog, both the dog and the cart belong to your new friend Sandra. And as these, uh, as these goblins are kind of like the goblin pulls his spear out of the, uh, out of the dog and holds it in the air and lets up like a chin, a, a cheer in goblin, rallying these, uh, these few around. You guys know, you guys kind of see what's going on. You catch a glimpse of just, just off to the side, cowering behind one of the barrels, is Sandrew Vishki, uh, Lycon's new friend, like looking desperately, like he's trying not to be seen by these creatures that just killed his pet and are probably ready to slaughter his horses and uh, burn down his carts. And as you guys rush onto the scene of all this, that is where we're gonna end it for tonight. Dun dun. These guys are. These are, these are nice folks, nice goblins. Nice. You know, if if he wants to not be seen, I want he to should hold stop him sewing. and pet him <laughs> again. <laughs> I will call him George. <laughs> <laughs> Do mean things to you like struggle your fur the wrong way. <laughs> oh man. So uh, as we as we kind of wrap things up, coming up on eleven o'clock with a solid three hours of gaming behind us. Uh, I want to ask, first of all, to everyone in chat hanging out, and thank you so much for everyone who hung out with you. What about, did you guys have a good time? Did you enjoy the, uh, did you enjoy the game? And also to you guys hanging out with me here in Roll20, my, my awesome cast. You guys had a good time? I enjoyed <laughs> that spell, cantrip, that I was using that I forget the name of, that <laughs> ate babies. R that was bam. Yeah. I wish yeah. uh, my rolls had been a little bit better on the uh, the attacking stuff, but everything else worked okay. We'll, we'll see what we can do about those rolls next time. We'll, we'll see if we can't fix those. I took all the luck. All your luck is mine. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. <laughs>
No, but uh, but that will conclude our first episode uh, of the brand new series of Jade Regent here on the Exploding Dice channel. Thank you for everyone who hung out. Thank you for fun. yeah. Thank you for everyone who followed. By the way, you guys are great. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Please. Uh, please let us know if you haven't already if you're enjoying the show hit that follow button uh, and I just got some some quick things I want to go over before we let a let everyone in our cast let you know what the shtick is um, so if you're enjoying the show and you want to do more than follow you want to help support this channel uh, make more great content um, I work full-time I work like 40 hours a week and so it's I put on any as much content as I can here on Exploding Dice. But if you want to help me make more, the best way is, of course, uh, to hit up that Patreon. Alter Time. Oh. Yes, Alter Time too. <laughs> I am not a high enough wizard level wizard to cast that spell. But the Rob next bank. Best, the the next best thing is to hit up that Patreon link. Become a patron. You can support anywhere from one dollar on up. And every dollar that you guys let us, uh, that you guys pledge, goes right back into making the show even uh, and the channel even better. Uh, also, if you want more D and D in your life, every Tuesday I have a thing called Fuzzy Dice. It's an awesome talk show where I bring on great guests, podcasters, game designers, Twitch streamers, and we hang out and we talk RPGs and we answer your questions live in chat. It's an amazing time. Uh, this week I've got Mike Shea from the Sly Flourish blog. He's a he's an amazing dude, and we'll be hanging out and talking. Last week I had uh, the Bacon RPG group, uh, and I had um, James and Tricasa, who just won an Emmy for the best blog in D and D or in Hi. RPGs. Yeah, um, so he he's a great dude, uh, and yeah, as he reminds me, he reminds me a great deal of the guy who played the main character Boone. In Nightbreed, I don't know that reference. Me it's it's a movie. It's okay. I don't. I, I don't. I over my. Anyway, head. he just he reminds me of him. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, definitely. As Dice Thulu is reminding you, do do show up on Tuesdays at eight p.m. for Fuzzy Dice, please. Uh, and before we get out of here, I'm gonna just run through our cast. Once again, we'll go down the list. Everyone, introduce yourselves and tell everyone in chat where they can find you, what you do on the internet, and uh, what makes you so awesome. We'll start all at once. Right, yeah, all at once, right here, Mr. Trend. Okay, I guess we're starting on me. I heard that in there somewhere. So I am Trendane. You can find me on YouTube at Trendane. You can find me on Twitter at Trendane. I'm pretty much Trendane everywhere except for Facebook. <laughs> I'm where I'm Trend Sparks. Facebook is the only place that I'm not. But you know, just follow me on Twitter and or. I don't care. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> just uh, do a thing. So, professional voice actor, and when I'm not doing D&D here, I'm also doing uh, D&D and uh, voiceover over on our Vanellaron's channel, but I don't know when we're doing that anytime soon, because he hasn't told us yet. So, yeah. Okay. Your turn. <laughs> Adam, what about you, man? Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Good, good job, Adam. Good job. <laughs> All right. Um, Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> I'm Adam. I'm a, I'm a streamer of sorts. We're working on getting our stream up totally tweaked uh, with Chris to my right. I'm pointing at him right now. If you can't see. And uh, we're still working on this whole scheduling thing because I don't understand, like, the whole scheduling of shows. I just play like eight hours from when I come home from work and then just <laughs> leave the stream on so we're working on like a format and making it a whole lot more entertaining than just watching us play for eight to ten hours a day uh, I'm also writing uh, writing a, a book that's taking forever with <laughs> Ashley yeah it'll get done eventually <laughs> promises <laughs> All right. no, it, uh, and uh, yeah Chris will finish up the rest on the stream stuff but uh, you should see more of us soon you can follow us on Twitch you can find us on Twitch at to Totally Tweet and you can find me on Twitch I, on, uh, on Twitter is it, isn't, isn't there a weird spelling of that though yeah yes. it's got a D <laughs> y yeah uh, so I was going to drop a link in chat so everyone can hit you up That's Chris is going to do all that, that. All right. oh, I don't have the link ready <laughs> you drop it Sorry. I've got other things to promote tonight. Oh, oh shit. Oh, man. Um, 
Go now, like it, Adam guys. said, we do a, a fairly casual stream right now. We're trying to work on getting something more uh, more scheduled out, and it's totally tweaked. T W E E K D on Twitch. Um, we do, you know, right now we're kind of doing whatever. We're going to try to get a little standard format. Um, but this weekend, I actually wanted to drop a line for my wife, who just won two awards for her third book in her book series that she is writing. That is uh, awesome. She won two awards last night. We're down in Orlando this weekend. Um, it's called uh, it's the Keepers of the Essence series, and um, I was going to send you guys a link in Skype if you could pop that out for. Her. Yeah, yeah, you um, got it, man. Just uh, this is her third book. She's writing a seven book series. Um, this is the third book she's got published. Um, she's doing it all herself at the moment. So if anybody's interested in fantasy, please check it out. Which uh, I don't know really anyone appreciate. Like that. I don't know. Anyone. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I figured this was a good crowd, so I wanted to promote her a little bit, but. Uh, yeah, she's been working really hard on it. So if you guys feel like it, hit her up. Um, she's more than happy to answer questions. So please email her or shoot her a uh, message. Like right I feel like a metal panini. Thank you for following, my friend. Welcome to the madness. <laughs> that would be madness. It's very difficult on the jaws, too. No, no, no it's not like a panini made of metal. It's just a really metal panini. Oh! oh they panini. rocked out. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I like sandwiches. Sandwiches. <laughs> Candy bars. Mm. Oh lord. And what about you, Ashley? Tell everyone Chris's about you. Chris's wife is hot too, so I don't really know how Chris ended up with that, like a talented hot wife. So that sounds like a. Sings like too. A, a, yeah, no, that's. <laughs> like... I'm hoping to uh, retire soon, and then I can do streaming <laughs> and whatever I want all the time. Did you say she sings or she stinks? I couldn't Jeez. quite hear it. I-N-G-S. Okay. She's also a gymnast, so she's, like, flexible. So Chris basically hit the jackpot. <laughs> well, this, is, no. this is, of course, mm. everything that the, that the people this watching the show want. This is a PG-13 show, right? It's it's not, but this is information that they wanted to know, <laughs> I know. All, all <laughs> night, they were like, oh, well, this is fun, I, but I, what about his wife? I'm so back <laughs> about this. <laughs> For what it's worth, I don't, I, I'm not, I don't care. So no, better watch it. Just, yeah, I'm, I'm Ashley. I'm Two Dorks TV. I stream every day. I work with Dungeon Boss. Um, yeah, I just hang out on the internet. You guys. <laughs> you can drop a link to to your Twitch or Twitter if you want. <clears throat> I'm trying to make macros for that. Um, so do go ahead and check out all of these guys' awesome uh, content on the internet. And of course, make sure you are back here next Sunday. To see more of your the content here on Exploding Dice, where we, we will play more Jade Regent. But until then, thank you everyone for hanging out. Uh, let the madness continue, and don't let Dice get his tentacles on you because he <laughs> makes you roll really low when he does. But uh, I, I, I and here's to a more well-rested gaming group next weekend. Yes, I, right. Holy crap! <laughs> All I need right. a boyfriend. I need I need a boyfriend. I need Daisulu to be my boyfriend. Why can't I have? I, why do you not? I can't. That's, that's, I, I guess can't. It's the I weird can't. like tentacle stuff. Yeah, he's he's into uh, he's into like foot things and and also butt <laughs> play. It's it's weird, man. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll catch you guys amateur. later. Amateur. <laughs> Uh, we need some sleep. I need some food. You guys need to go check out all of those awesome links. And we will see you back here tomorrow for Everyone is John with some awesome friends of mine. Take care, guys. We'll see you later. Bye. Be careless. Later.